welcome to Omega Dawn. And welcome to everybody watching, uh, and welcome to all the players. Um, we uh, need a quick recap on what we've been all doing uh, in terms of the game. Um, the players are uh, currently travelling um, to uh, the centre of the frontier, the Tengral Sims yeah, system, Tungta. Uh, and uh, are currently on a, uh, a ship on the way there. Um, last week, um, after being attacked by um, a Sathar uh, invasion force who seemed to be searching for something, you guys found yourselves in possession of a vial of Blue Plague, um, the most deadly pathogen known in the frontier, um, after uh, deciding what to do with it, uh, one of the last things you guys did was eject said pathogen into um, the local star to deny it to the um, Streel Corporation, who you believe is the ones um, running the show here and whose ship you are ultimately on even though uh, the ship is actually owned by a subsidiary of that company. Does anyone remember what the subsidiary's name was? No? Dear oh dear no. boys. <laughs> you say it it's going to be like oh yeah i remember yes sorry it's in the middle of something um so yes yeah, so that's where things stand um you uh, are currently uh still on the way to um pangrao um you guys were wanting to uh do some further research on the ship I believe. So let's put some background noise in of you guys on the ship. Okay. So, what do you guys want to do? Um, you you are back on course for your next jump, by the way. Uh, what Cat was concerned about was erasing everything that we found. Uh, so we find that uh, and we also wanted to uh, properly clean up the jury rigged uh, UV setup as well. Yes, that was on the uh, lower deck. The cleanup of the lower deck in its entirety. <laughs> Here we go, there's the lower deck for you. So yes. Alright, well um so you spend a good uh, a good day or so cleaning up um the, the lower deck, getting rid of the UV, doing checks and such what. I'll drop that down a bit further. Here we go. And um, I'll need a roll off you, Cat, to do some uh, some computer cleaning, shall we say? <coughs> yeah. Uh, which one would you like? Uh Operate or yeah, now operates. Uh, uh, let's see here. Um, let's get. Uh, we'll call it a computer. We'll do a computer repair role for that one. I think makes the best one. Yep. Uh, let me. Congratulations. Okay. 
Yeah, you think you've cleaned things up. Don't forget, though, it's a high-powered computer, so there's a, there's a bit of um, a bit of um, negative modifiers to that. That yeah. role for the computer itself. Um, but uh, one interesting thing in your in your travels, though, uh, around the computer, um, is. Uh, There seems to be some circumstantial evidence um, that uh, there are some sort of organic components to the computer. Ah, what we suspected, but didn't have any evidence. Well, we guess we don't really have any more evidence. <laughs> no, uh, yeah. no, no, not no. hard evidence. <laughs> not hard but, uh, evidence, no. Hmm, all right. Uh, and I guess that would mean I would be relaying this if people are around me. But I guess that would mean that we would suspect that that's what the Sathar were after. Because they went into the medical lab, so they weren't after the Blue Plague. Uh, well, they didn't go into the medical lab. Oh, they didn't. No. They went into hydroponics, auxiliary control, the emergency power plant. They didn't yeah. go into spare parts or robots, okay, or medical lab. Well, okay, as far gotcha. as you're aware, they didn't go those there, that's right. So, yes, so... Hmm. Hmm. That's interesting. Wait, so uh, you did uh, find organic parts? Computer, organic computer stuff? I, I didn't, <laughs> but we found evidence. Well, we didn't find evidence, but we found hints that it definitely could be true. Yeah, there seemed to be, there seemed to be some organic, some sort of organic um, component to the computer. Um, nothing direct, it's all circumstantial, but there are clues there that lead you guys to think that, possibly. Hmm. Uh, do we want to go around searching? What research did other people have? I just wanted to be doing uh, piloting and uh, tracking other ships. I don't want to get jumped in. Mm -hmm. I basically just got the uh, politics and financial stuff. Yeah, was there any more on that? Excuse me. Was there any more on that you wanted to uh, dive into regarding Streeter and your this company? Cool. I'm what? getting a bad feedback from you, Matt. Are you? Like a How hissy. Bad a feedback? Uh, is anybody else getting that, or is it yeah. just me? Uh, I okay. get it. It builds up slowly over time. Yeah. Okay, that's definitely feedback then. Hang on a sec. Let me just see if I can fix that quickly. Okay, that may fix things. Or you're just going to have to talk every 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. Oh yeah, new token. Oh. Oh. You did something and I just noticed it for the first time. Yeah, I'm st <laughs> I'm st I still haven't done the I haven't done the others yet. I'm still getting them loaded. Look at those. Yeah, I didn't get to do it yet. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I uh, I thought we needed better tokens. And Dark Order was really great to work with to get the new tokens for us. 
Yeah, when we did... When we did... Um, uh, when we did the um, 13th age, we worked with... Um, who's, the other guy? who's the other token guy? The one, really good one. I should know. I talked to him, uh, but he had a backlog. Yeah. yeah. Um, he, uh, we worked with him for the a lot of the tokens on the 13th age uh, rule set and bestiality. Um, so uh, um, he does some really good tokens as well. They both do. Um, they're really good boys in that regard. Devin Knight. Devin Knight. Hey, Devin. Devin Knight, that's it, thank you. I like his. Although, I, was it Dark Wolf, I think, that I got the... Uh, you can get the characters that you can interchange parts, like heads and such. There we go. That's I tried that out, and I actually like some of his pictures, too. Hmm. So those tokens are, should be locked into the right scale now. Cool. Hopefully. Yep, they look nice, though. They do look nice, don't they? Yeah, thanks that, Dan. Nice one. Makes it a little bit easier to see. <laughs> and you also tell which way you're facing now, too. Hmm. Yeah, he came up with uh, Kat's digital hollow screen, or whatever you want to call that, in front of her. I hey. like that. I hope you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it looks good. And I think she actually has a dot of his interface anyway, so it really matches her gear as well. Mm. Well, if you actually the um, yeah, uh, I didn't look at Dan when you I first got it, but when you had it blown up on the screen here, it's like you know that's how I kind of picture him, especially with <coughs> the uh, picture up top there. Uh, uh, Daniel Scorch, yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, Babu looks pretty good too. And yeah. so does, I mean, they all yeah. look great. They all look pretty good. What's Babu carrying? I'm trying. I just can't work it out. Horse axe. Oh, is that what it is? Right. Favorite weapon. <laughs> <laughs> favorite weapon. <laughs> I'm sitting there looking at going. Oh, I can't work out what that is. That's all right. Yeah, okay. there were like, for for Star Frontiers, like no images anywhere of a force axe. So we kind of came up no. with what we thought. Yeah, that's cool. I like it. That's cool. In fact, um, that Babu, the, the token fits the character because he tries to be human. And he's yeah. in clothes. Yeah. Yep. Um, by the way, I need somebody to... Who's not on the list there? Can someone grab... Um, Jazz. Can, Jazz, please? I got two already. <laughs> uh, so, I think so that means you, Ben. <laughs> yeah, so left on to me. Uh, Go Got him. Excellent. Thanks, mate. All right. So, um, after a, 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 um, sorry, um, let's go back a bit. You were wanting to, you were doing some research on the company or asking about something like that at one stage, somebody? Well, I was just saying what, you asked what we could do for research and I'm good at the politics and finance aspect. And, and then Cerise, or Dan said something, either one. Um, just about if there was anything else. Again, I can't remember the sub the ship subsidiary company, and if there was anything else on that you wanted. Well, that's to what I was doing. That's what I was doing. <laughs> Terrain transport. Good old terrain transport. All right, now we know who our friends are. Hmm. Now we're not friends. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Uh, hmm. So, yeah. So, um, well, terrain transport, are you doing a, a politics, uh, economics 
um, research there, Babs? Can do that. Nice roll. You got an e you got an economic an economics one for me too, please. Uh, let me get it there. Uh, Not as good. good. Not as good. Finance. That's the one. Um, look. Um, from the uh, from a a uh, corporate politics point of view, Terrain Transport is a subsidiary of Streel. Um. They are supposed to be working on some sort of um, um, automated or semi-automated star lining system. Um, there are some interesting, um, again, circumstantial evidence links um, between um, uh, terrain transport and a possible tourist tourist route to Volturnus, uh, which now obviously been put on hold. Um, um, there's no direct links between your friendly um, um, space pirate um, and uh, Streel or terrain transport. Um, but Certainly, um, amongst everybody else, you know, there were government officials, there were um, people from a lot of the um, corporations um, on the terrain system uh, on Pale and New Pale that uh, were caught up in the um, information you guys brought back from Volturnus. Um, Streel being primarily based in Terrain Star, um, a lot of their people and a lot of their subsidiaries people were were part of that for obvious reasons. You know, just the sheer sheer percentages. You know, if you're the biggest employer, some of your employees are going to get caught up in the in, in that. Nobody very high up. Uh, nobody nice above them. Hey. I was just going to ask that if anybody of note. No one of note. No one above a middle management level. Certainly none of the C-suite. Certainly none of the the real suits. Um, you know, um, the, the 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 a division head uh, was the biggest scalp. Um, a little bit like. A little bit like what happened with. Um, v, uh, VW. Uh, and the and car admission scandals. Yeah, I don't get you know. started on that. <laughs> yeah, they blame. Yeah, they blame the they blame the the rogue engineers and things like that. similar type level of 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 um of, of thing happened. Uh, you know, um, but uh, but of course a lot of a lot of these companies are um a lot of these companies a lot of these subsidiaries are intertwined. You know. Um, the same individual sits on two or three different boards. Um, you know, um, who knows what, who knows what what gets done off the books for different, you know, different as favours for different people around the place with different things. So, um, but yeah, there's certainly no direct evidence of any of that. But um, again, by reputation, if anyone's going to, if any mega corporation is going to be if any mega cor if any mega corporation's got a, the, the worst rep it's Streel. Streel's probably got the worst rep out of all of them which is not by a large amount I mean you know uh, talk to anyone in the frontier and sooner or later somebody's going to have a beef with one of the mega corporations over something it, that's just you know uh, what happens um but as a general rule, Streel's Streel is is known for being the most ruthless um, of the mega corps in their dealings with with competitors and, 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 and things like that. So so yeah. 
Well, if Is that, you were nope, to nope. correlate that data on all the people that got removed due to connections with this, is there any type of uh, oh, correlation? Is there anything that says, you know, like people that lean this way or that way were as a group picked up and removed? Or, you know, is there something that you can see within the corporate structure that says they're cleaning house on this type of uh, person? Or is it just totally random? Um. To your mind, to your mind, it seems totally random. Um, there, there, there could have been some. Certainly, from the on the political side of things, the in-house political side of things, it's it seems pretty random. Um, financially, it's hard to tell you 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 didn't do that well on your financial. Um, yeah. On your financial role, um, so uh, it's it's difficult to tell in that regard. Um, the uh, the um, various um, individuals being knocked off. I mean, it, it it makes a certain amount of sense that oh yeah, I can see why that person was was working with with um, somebody, you know, I mean the somebody senior in the in resource extraction. You know, I mean, there was a quarter. Of, there was. Don't know what happened to it. I was a quarter of a million credit worth of iron ore sitting on a certain landing pad, ready to be. You know, <laughs> uh, can't rem can't remember what happened to that. Can you? I don't, you know, uh, Damn careless don't remember pirate. it. Um, yeah. So someone someone like that. W w w if that if that name comes up or that position comes up, yeah. Oh yeah, I can see why that was done. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, but some of them, some people are just like, wow, you know, why the hell was that position, you know, did they know something or, or is somebody just taking the opportunity to get rid of somebody, in, to get rid of a rival, you know, type thing. Um, so, and that, that happens in, it, that's happening in the government sphere as well. Um, the train, the train, um, the pale and new pale governments. Um, there's individuals there that are, that are being knocked off. Again, no one's very senior. No politician has been um, uh, nabbed yet, uh, although some, some interesting questions were asked uh, in Parliament, but no one actually uh, was, was censured or impeached or anything. Um, and um, a couple of individuals in the UPF were actually done as well. Um, it's a couple of the people from the Secretariat uh, who should have been, who, you know, ideally should have been above that and the UPF supposedly, the UPF Secretariat supposedly is incorruptible. Um, ha ha, you know. Um, so, so yeah. Um, so I suppose what it boils down to is suspicions but no proof. But with what with what the information you found in the computers last week, it certainly seems like you guys were set up to take a fall if a fall was going to be taken. Yep. So we've disposed of the blue plague at this point. We're headed to um, Pangal. And what was our yep. plan when we reached there? Are we going to just pretend nothing happened or just report to Safar or... Well, there was some dis some debate about whether you're going to report the Sapphire or not. You certainly, I believe the, the thinking, and correct me if I'm wrong, I believe the thinking was you were going to not mention the Blue Plague and just keep completely quiet about it. I mean, um, but uh, if you mention the Sapphire, the question is what were they, I mean the question may be what were they going to, what were the Sapphire going to be doing? Yeah, uh, but then again, they managed to intercept you guys not long after jump. Remember, that's a pretty neat feat of astrogation. Yeah, to pull that off. So it might be worth mentioning the Sapphire in that regard. 
So yeah. Cat's keen to just walk off the ship and say, that was a luxurious ride, thank you, and then walk away. <laughs> we got rid of the bodies, right? Yes, we did. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And are we able to alter any other records that we need to to show there was no Sathar here? Or going through any of these cabins? Well... Cat thinks he's done all right doing a lot of that with the computer. I mean, the blue plague stuff, the got the stuff that implicated you guys uh, um, as being, being bringing the stuff on board was pretty deeply buried. It would have only been found if it would have only been found if there was reason to go looking for it in the first place. Uh, it was pretty deeply buried, um, so if there's no reason for the UPS to go looking for it. There's no reason to to, to find it and cat thinks she's got rid of it anyway but footage from footage of the uh, of the sapphire incursion that's going to be a little bit harder to get rid of again if you don't report it there's no reason to go looking for it so it's up to you guys well if we got rid of the bodies and we already tried to the computer evidence I think we have to continue that path anybody feel otherwise? okay nope no I'm actually thinking the same way but the only the only slight concern that I have is the moral responsibility if the Sathar are able to intercept ships that quickly out of jump, you know, does you have to know about it? Yeah, that's a concern, I suppose. Um, the, I mean, without being an astrogational expert, astrogational expert, which you guys unfortunately are not yet. Um, you, uh, the most likely, ex the most likely explanation is that somebody dobbed you in, in terms of, uh, yeah, if the Sapphire had your, had the, uh, relevant information, um, they could have been, um, laying uh, in wait on the right vector at roughly the right speed in roughly the right spot and then an hour or so of hard hard G manoeuvring would have bought could have brought them in close enough to launch the attack because it wasn't right on jump it was about an hour after hour and a half after so yeah I think that's a reasonable assumption is that they had intelligence as to when and where we would be arriving Which raises questions in its own right. Where'd they get the intelligence from, obviously? Spies. Well, we can't, we can't really uh, expose that right now without exposing our own self. Yeah, and that's the problem. And then that would cause the digging through the computers. Uh, that's a likely outcome, yeah. I'd say we just had an enjoyable flight. Yep. <laughs> I know my axe enjoyed it. Yeah. <laughs> Your axe enjoyed it. <laughs> I don't quite think that's the way. Babu, uh, the space Viking. Yeah. Yes. Well. Cat's uh, very keen to go searching again for the uh, robot brain. Hopefully, we don't get attacked by more Sathar because that happened when she tried last time. Uh, but <laughs> that could have been that could have been coincidence. <laughs> I mean, coincidences do happen. Yeah. <laughs> Somewhat. Um. All right. So if you got yeah, you guys um, strap yourselves in, uh, ready for yep. the jump. We jump. All right. Yeah, I'm on the bridge. All right.
So, gotta love that rumble at the end. Um, so, after a uh, after a brief uh, jump into nothingness, you guys. Interesting. Um, you guys have uh, jumped into the Prengla system. Isn't that All right. So I want to start scanning, checking sensors. Yeah. Go. Uh, what are you looking for in particular? Anything interesting? Anything within, you know, uh, I don't know, a hundred thousand units of us. And anything with an intercept course. All right. Uh, nothing with an, nothing on the intercept course that you can detect. Um, nothing. Uh, nothing. Uh, nothing at all. Um, I mean, this regular traffic you'd expect in the hub of the frontier, but nothing that close. Nothing that nearby. So yeah, um, interesting. Here's a question for you, Dan. Have you ever seen a not being able to reduce a token down in size? Uh, no. Is it lo is the scale locked? No. No, it's not. I can move it up, but I can't move it down. Uh, that's really. Oh, hang on. No, there it was. It was locked. <gasps> Stupid me. Don't mind me. Pebcack. 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 Gotta love the Pebcack. <sighs> so, so, um, you're on the bridge, you said? Yes, please. Yes, please. And I assume you're in the computer room, ja uh, Kat? Yep. I'm in the lab. Where's everybody else? Babu's in the lounge. I'm not sure where Daniel would want to hang out. Probably with you in the lounge. You're not, you're not that big. <laughs> Here we go. Anyway. So, you know, it's nothing, there's nothing around. I mean, there's plenty of ships around and things like that. You're still a couple of days away from uh, Prangalar in terms of your decelerate and all the rest of it, but yeah. And I also want to set up uh, any programs or commands with... It, the AI was Alex, right? Yeah, Alex. Alex. Uh, to Alex. ask him to give me yeah, any sorry. notifications if he calculates any inter if anything plots an intercept course with us or anything plot uh, there's a course within again I don't really know distances but say a hundred thousand uh, kilometers yeah hundred thousand kilometers is good enough ah Rotten thing that's got it. Close enough, anyway. Um, yeah, sure. Not a problem. Or, as, as he says, can do, boss! Yeah, I have lots of faith in that, too. What? Can do, boss? Alex. What? 
He hasn't let you down yet. Uh, yeah. He allowed aliens to board the ship. Nah, it's a scurrilous lie. Don't believe a word of it. <laughs> um, what are you doing, Cat? You were doing something in the lounge, in the computer room. You were, you were going after somebody or something. I was keen to try and see if we can find the uh, source of this computer's power, trying to find its brain. Because uh, that's particularly interesting to her. I don't think it she could be, be on the ship and, and not, not try and find it. Oh, give me a computer repair roll, please. And there's going to be some penalties involved, of course. That'll do it. Very nice. Um, yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> yeah, look, um, with some, um, over the course of about, course of uh, five or six hours, you manage to trace back, uh, and you do find a, pardon me, you do find a uh, sealed um, sphere, or not quite sphere, spheroid, actually, uh, deep in the guts of the computer. Um, there seems to be um, some organic um, components to that going into that sphere. Um, it's not just electronics; it's fluid and and as well uh, and, and, and things as well. Um, the, the the spheroid is um, uh, it's not a complete. I mean, it, it's two halves that, that seem to have been um, sealed together. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, it's you've never seen anything like this before. Actually, that's not quite true. Um, no, it's not. It's not something you've seen before. Um, somebody else might have seen something like it before. As in somebody else in the party, or uh, Daniel? I don't. Know. Well, I'm shrugging my shoulders here. I'm shrugging my shoulders here. You can't see it, but I'm shrugging my yeah. shoulders here. Well, I would relay this information. Uh, I guess Cerise would be particularly, maybe interested. Uh, Jazz might be too if we can get him away from the food. Uh, so hopefully Jazz comes down. Yeah, I'll go take a look. Um, it ring rings a bell of the um, Sathar outpost on Volturnus. Cybernetic cyborg uh, entities they had in the basement. Mm -hmm. Is it anything like those? Uh, yeah, I mean, you can see that this. I mean, uh, yeah, cousins type thing. Yeah, you can see a relate. Yeah, some sort of relationship there. Um, tell you what, you can give me if you like, Cerise. Can you give me a uh, an ID, a robotics ID, please? Roll. Sure, absolutely. Uh, I can roll. Okay, you're not sh again. Penalties and p penalties do apply. Um, you're not sure, but it also se you, 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 it, it seems to remind you also of some of the um, um, cyborg um, brain um, organic metallic interface units um, in some of the cyborg cybernetic robots you've um, you've seen or you've not seen you've you've studied in your uh, in your robotics courses. It's it's it's. A, a, a resemblance, it's not an exact match. All right. For starters, it's about twice as large as any you would have ever seen. All it's right. about, it's, 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 it's about 50 centimeters in diameter, this spheroid. And just for comparison's sake, the human head's about 15 to 20. 
<laughs> in diameter. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, any chance it's one of the Enora? They had big heads, um, right? The dinosaurs? They had big heads, but no bigger, no bigger than, than Jazz's. What about the central core of a Drowlicite? Again, that's about a human brain size, the central nervous brain, central nervous cluster of a drow. Um, I suppose you could feel, fit the entire drowlicite inside if it was a, um, a young, small drowlicite. What you doing? Says Alec. Uh, obviously... Uh, Cat has taken photos and stuff at this point. Uh, oh, hey, she jotted, <laughs> jot, jotted down notes. Uh, what have you? Oh, sorry, sorry. Alex. What, have, what, 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 what have you uh, taken photos with? My um, data com. It can Fair take enough. photos. Fair enough. Is she? Yeah, she's prepared. My as life. long as you didn't say iPhone. <laughs> well, essentially. It's the 80s equivalent of what they would have imagined an iPhone to be. Uh, yes, uh, and Alec, do you know what this thing is here? And Cat points to the to the big spherical object. It's uh, part of the main computer. Ah. Do you know what it does? Do you know how it works? Nope. Uh, he's not very helpful. But I wouldn't go messing around with it if I were you. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it, cats. Sadness here is that we can't just rip the thing out uh, and not die. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Uh, could Cat uh, investigate it as a, uh engineer to kind of get any ideas of how it's powered? Uh, use her chemistry and physics knowledge a little bit as well again. Uh, so which which skill we are which skill do you want to use I could roll uh, I could roll two I could roll civil engineering and chemistry uh, just to see if I can find out a little bit more from there or analysis analysis is probably your best bet at this stage chem analysis if that's what you're looking at Oh, balls. Yeah. Um, <laughs> in fact, I just realised that you rolled a critical fail there. Yeah, um, yeah, I know. In fact, um, you, you have discovered... Okay, good news, good news and bad news. You have yeah. discovered um, the power source for the sphere. Excellent. <laughs> uh, the bad news is you take four points of damage because you touched the power source for the sphere. Excellent. Let me write Four points that of electrical down. damage. Um, Cerise, Cerise says, probably shouldn't touch that again. Don't stick yeah. your tongue in those slots. Actually, does anyone has anyone seen the the Kelsey Grammer film uh, Down Periscope? Yes. All right, you you know the radio operator. Uh, trying to remember. Where well, yeah. he's licking his fingers and, and touching the the power board, the electrician, to try and get the 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 radio to work. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> bit like that. Uh, just for the record, it's the second game I've been playing this week that they mentioned that. <laughs> Is it really? <laughs> yeah, they talked about that in Eve the other day. Well, there you go. Thanks, Jesus. It was kind of funny because they also mentioned Bruce Lee talking about a person <laughs> being water and flowing. And yeah. that night during the Steeler game, they mentioned one of the running backs was running like water, like Bruce Lee talked about. I'm like, geez, easy. <laughs> Terrible, isn't it? 
It makes me feel like, what was that movie where the guy's li whole life was being videotaped? Oh, Truman um, Show. Yeah. Truman well, that makes me feel like that's what I'm living, you know? Actually, the Truman Show wasn't the first. There was another film, a f foreign film, they did the same thing. And they ripped off they ripped off the foreign film to do the Truman Show. Like, they haven't done that before. Magnificent Seven, cough, cough. <laughs> yeah. I didn't mean to distract, sorry. No, no, that's cool. So, you three guys on the bridge, on the bridge, you three guys on the, on the, um, lounge. lounge. Gin and tonics, yeah. Gin and tonic, yes, 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 yes. yes. Uh, where are we? Okay. Uh, okay. 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 Yep. Okay. Um, as uh, that robot uh, comes up to you um, with your gin and tonic, um, he uh, smashes it across your arm for 10 points of damage and I'm going to need initiative rolls off the three of you please in the um, in the lounge uh, let me find that first and get that there we are you said three points or four uh, 10 points of damage God, that's annoying. Okay, and Babu got a twelve. And Daniel got an 11. Pretty consistent there, gentlemen. I think we're kind of... Yeah. Ready. Guess I should have asked for the whiskey sour instead, huh? Um, all right, so uh, you guys have got uh, the initiative this round. You guys on the bridge deck don't know what's going on yet, by the way. Yep, I figured. So we're going to do Babs or Jazz. Who wants to go for Jazz? Goes first. I'm going to ready my force axe and dodge out of the way of any other attack. Okay, sorry. You've got your force axe with you in the lounge. Is that right? Yeah. Now, uh, I'm kind of that assuming logic? that this thing is more like a uh, a rod of some sort until you actually power the axe part on, or is it an actual axe all the time? No, it's an actual it's an actual axe all the time that puts a puts a, uh, um, a, a force line around the blade. Okay, then maybe I won't. So, what do you want to do? Uh, well, Jazz, not having, he wouldn't have anything, I don't think. Uh, he okay. could chron I can, chronicom. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I can see you guys, I can see you guys carrying pistols. Yeah. Right? I can see you guys having a knife on your belt. All right? Possibly yeah. even a hand axe, maybe. But, but rifles and 
large weapons like for, force axes and swords. Yeah. Uh, I could possibly even see a sword, possibly. All right, but you guys were you guys. I mean, well, we just got technically by Sathar too. I mean, I, yeah, I well understand we're supposed to be where we're safe, but this whole trip was supposed to be safe. True. Which is why I said I can see you guys having pistols and knives, but large weapons like like rifles and axes, I can't see you guys carrying those around all the time. Nightstick. Is nightstick, he, maybe. Okay. Right, I can go with nightstick. Sonic It'll sword. Be the second, second. Well. Well, see, the sonic swords are, again. The sonic sword's just the handle. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So Jazz will have his sonic sword. Okay. Uh, and he will walk over there and attack with it. Okay. So move over there and attack. Uh, okay. napping. <sighs> Sorry, I gotta find Jazz's melee. Alright. <coughs> that looks so strange upside down like that. Okay, so 17 points to the droid. Yep. Alright, so that's Jazz. Actually, we should be able to do this via the track up. We, we do, good. Babu! Uh, I'll attack with the nightstick. Okay. That's a hit. I'm surprised Jazz didn't try and go nuts. It's true. But it wouldn't be jazz without him forgetting to battle rage, so we're playing into <laughs> character. <laughs> You've got a point. <laughs> That's 14 points of damage there. Oh, Jazz's damage would have been 20, by the way. I forgot the plus three. Mm-hmm. Do I need to do something? Um... What do you mean you need to do something? End turn well. on the co combat tracker, probably. Sorry. Um, you can click on the, yeah, there we go, yeah, click on that, yeah. so Daniel, there we go. Didn't have any cards didn't. to click on. No, well, different, <laughs> different game, dude, but yeah, fair enough. Oh, yeah, Daniel, what can he do now? Uh, he does have a pistol, though, doesn't he? Actually, I think he is going to concentrate. Not next turn or this turn, but the turn after the third turn. That's what I'm after. A little bit of battle music. So that should okay. give him a little bit quicker, but cost not as much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh no. Oh no, what? I'm metagaming. Bot 2. Hey? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, cool. <laughs> second, that was the second service bot, remember? Okay. <laughs> so, no, no metagaming. That was the second service bot. Fair enough. 
And just for that, I'm gonna smack you. I'm gonna smack Babu on the head again. <laughs> <laughs> for eleven points, Babs. Dang. Oh wait a minute, though. What? Civilian scan suit. Yeah, well, that's. <laughs> you gotta remember that, dude. I can't. Yeah. So that takes what half of that. Mm-hmm. So Jazz takes, takes five, five and, and then it six. takes six. Okay. Where is Jazz putting his skin suit health? I thought there was a defenseless subsection. Um, I need some initiatives off the two guys in the bridge, please. Bridge deck, please. Okay, the 15's good. Eleven is not bad. So, cat. Um, a security bot has just walked on onto the bridge. Ah, uh, interesting. Well, E two is going to. Grab out her sonic sword and attack. Well, oh, it's made no threatening gestures towards you. Well, good point. That doesn't it say it's not going to, I'm saying it hasn't yet. <laughs> so it's not wielding a weapon and pointing at us or, or anything? Not yet. Mm, okay. Fine. Uh, well, in that case, if it isn't shooting at us, I... I will hold my action until it does something threatening. Okay. If it does something threatening. Okay. Because Cerise should be able to talk to it and deal with it better than I can. Cerise? Cerise will, uh, uh talk to Alec. Alec, why have you uh, activated your security robots? Have them stand I have down. It. I haven't activated the security robots. There is an active security robot in this room with me. No, there's not. Oh, wait. Mm -hmm. Yes, there is. Why can't I not detect it? I don't know if I can say more this round, or you want me to wait for no, next round? No, you may not. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> so who am I facing? That's you, isn't it, Cat? Or is that you, Cerise? Hang on. That's Cerise. Hard to tell. Hard to tell? I had, to, I had the map zoomed it right out. I had the map zoomed right out. So oh, I okay. Tell. It's all right. Trust me. Okay, the security bot. Ah, why can't I never find something where I'm in a hurry? <coughs> um, slices at you with a stun stick. Uh, and causes 22 points of electrical damage. It's does not set to stun. The anti-shock implant, does that do anything against that? You got an, you've got an anti-shock implant, have you? F yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Uh... Best thousand credits device there is. It is, actually, because it, you take no damage from that. Sorry. 
You take eight points of damage from the, the sheer force of the blow. But none from the shock. Alrighty. And just to make things interesting. Because I like making things interesting. Um, the kitchen robot. If for some reason it's a bit bigger than the other one. I don't know why. Hang on. That's better. Um, is heading towards you guys as well. Oh, go away. And takes a swing at Jazz with a uh, cleaver. That is Jazz, isn't it? Yeah. Um, that is jazz, but yeah. misses. And then, uh, uh, that's initiatives, please, guys. Hang on, cat held her action. Until oh, bugger, she too. Go on and hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you forget about that. No. What the hell happened there? That's not right. I must have way too many dice on that thing. Clear dice. Yeah, it's way too many dice, dude. Yeah. Hang on. Clear dice. Percentage. There we go. This should be better. Yep. Okay, so you hit. And plus three on whatever this is. So 23. Mm hmm. Okay. So, initiatives off everybody, please. Eight for cat. And twelve for Daniel. And eleven for Cerise, doesn't change. And fourteen for Jazz. And four for Babu. That sounds more consistent, Babu. Yeah, unfortunately. After totally not being surprised, he sits back on his heels and goes, huh, so. Yeah. I can't roll a decent initiative to kill me, he looks like. Hey, wait, that's bad. <laughs> What's that bad? means you're rolling well. You can't roll an initiative to kill you. Doesn't that mean yeah. you're rolling high? Yeah. And going to kill us instead? <laughs> Jazz, you're up. <laughs> Alright. 10% barrel rage. Will it happen? No, it won't. No, it went close. Uh, yeah, fairly close. Uh, he will swing with his uh, sonic sword. On the one that he was already attacking. You may mm -hmm. as well pick that one off. Oh, that's a miss. That's a miss. Daniel? D 
Daniel's going to stay the course and concentrate. Okay. Yeah, he can concentrate and still draw his pistol, though. Kill it. Sit again. Yeah, okay. He's still ready the pistol, but he's more concentrating right now. Okay. Hit the button on the... There we go. Thank you. Cerise. Uh, he's going to take off the panel on the security robot to deactivate it next turn. And say okay. to Alec, you have rogue security robots. Reset your security programs and shut down all robots. Acknowledged, says Alec. Okay, so you, you managed to get the panel off by the end of the round, yes. Yep, okay. So, um, a, a second security robot appears um, at the other airlock. Mm-hmm. See, you weren't metagaming, Dan. Uh, but uh, comes through the airlock and then stops. And stops. And stops. Cat? Uh, is the security, what is the security bot wielding as far as weaponry goes? Which one? The one, you, one you're fighting or the uh, second one? The, the other one, the one that, uh, actually, would she even see that? Out of the corner uh, of the eye, maybe? Possibly. Possibly. She's done line, you got line of sight. Out of yeah, the corner okay. of your eye, but. Yeah. Well, seeing that that one has its, uh, panel off, she knows that Cerise is going to deal with that one. Uh, so she would turn to face this one, uh, and just see what kind of weaponry it's got. Uh, again, it's got a stun stick. Stun stick. It looks like a, that, that appears to be the standard uh, armament for the uh, ship's security bots. Yep. At least it's not got a laser rifle or something. Uh, Alright. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, dragging the map instead of her token. Uh, yeah, it's annoying that, that one? Happens, isn't it? Uh, these are... Two feet or five foot? Uh, two meters. Two meters. Yep. Well, she can make that. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, and she will swing with her sonic sword. Oh. And, and Obviously you missed. And it's going to get stunned for the price of that. Okay, uh, again, you get smacked with the uh, stun stick. Um, your shock implant, Cerise, takes uh, most of the uh, damage, and you still, you still take two points of sheer bludgeoning damage, though. All right. Okay. I'm happy other people put stun sticks on security robots. Me, I put grenade launchers. Yes, but you're, you're, you're annoying. <laughs> in that regard. So with all the computers that I'm worrying, do I ever have to worry about them getting shorted out, getting electrically attacked? Hey? Like, if I get attacked with a, an electrical attack, like a stun stick, for instance, do I ever worry, need to worry about that shorting out my computers that I'm wearing? Like my body comp and no. all that kind of stuff? Okay, no. good. Well, I'll cry. when you have to worry, when you have to worry about it, all right, um, yeah. I'd be more worried about the sheer damage you've taken. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so, uh, Daniel. Yeah, I see it. Um. Uh, the robot that's just come in has just moved over and taken a swing 
a swing at you. Uh, and misses. They definitely took a swing at you. So and I'll do you. Are you having deja vu of Alligator 5 right now? <laughs> <laughs> you better you better explain. While I'm doing this, you better explain to them what you mean by that, mate. Oh, <laughs> uh, we're in the middle of this kind of, uh, I guess, boss fight to a certain extent. Uh, and they just kept alligator after alligator every round the new one popping up and just swarming us and we had three of our uh party members completely stunned with fear because they'd just seen something completely terrible and couldn't move at all uh and it was very uh i don't know it was very scary as players because we thought we we're all gonna die <laughs> hey, if it hadn't been for fake chips you would have yeah and it wasn't every round a couple of those alligators came out twice in the same round yeah, okay. Cool. So, yeah. <laughs> Babu, <laughs> you're up. Yeah, the man. other three robots missed everybody. Uh, so, Babu, what are you doing? Thing. I'm going to attack that one uh, that's been beaten on already. Okay. Oh, my. Wow. Yeah. Break the night sick and I fall flat on my face. Yeah. Just trying to help out, you know. Okay. Let me see what's gonna happen here. I'm gonna roll percent old dice. I'd say it couldn't have gotten any worse, but I don't think it could really. Yeah. Well you could hit Jazz uh, and he drops his sonic sword. Which is <laughs> almost what happened, but not quite. <laughs> um now look, uh, you managed to trip over the chair that you were fighting over the top of there uh, and uh, have gone prone and in the process take two points of general falling damage. Does the skein suit absorb any of Which that? Which would take one off. Okay. So, uh, that's your go. So, that's an issue, please, guys. Oh, bad. Yeah, cat, what are you doing? <laughs> Good time to get a one out of the way. Yeah, I suppose. And 10 for Daniel. Okay, Jazz, you're up. All right, Jazz is going to take a swing. Uh, yeah, there's probably no need to change uh, targets. Uh, oh, that's Cat's one. Wait a minute. I need to learn how to play two characters. <laughs> uh, Give them different dice colors. Yeah. Oh no, yeah, I just I, I, I pulled off the wrong character sheet. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's definitely it. That's a hit. Yep. Uh, and punch score is three, so add three to whatever this is. Twenty-four. Yep. Okay. That that robot is not looking very healthy at all. Huh. Oh, bot two. Hit the uh, hit the end oh, turn yeah. button Sorry. when you're done, mate. Please. Got it. Okay. Okay, the uh, security robot one 
seems to have learnt its lesson uh, about the stun stick. So it reaches out and grabs you around the... Hang on. Yes, it reaches out and grabs you around the throat, um, Cerise, and squeezes for eight points of damage. Skin suit help with that at all? Skin suit? Yeah, the skin suit will take half that. It's physical combat, it's physical damage, so... Cerise, speaking of Cerise. What you doing, Cerise? Oh, sorry, didn't realize you meant it was my turn. So I deactivate it. Okay, can you give me a deactivation roll, please? It's a level 4 bot, by the way. I didn't think deactivation was affected by level. It doesn't, I just remember that myself. <laughs> yep, okay, and... Uh, the security bot goes uh, goes limp. And then, if I have time, I want to give a chronocom chronocom call to everybody, telling them that, hey guys, security robots are attacking. Be careful. Mm, yeah, not this round, but you can see that next round. All right. Okay. Babu. That door open. Which door? one next to the robot. Yes. And well, am I correct in one of these here? Uh, is that uh, where I put my room? Or where would I find one my axe? Axe, one of the, well, whatever, whichever room we, you, you were in. Uh, Which room was it in? Was that, it was that one or the one above it? I, I can't remember which one I claimed. Call it that one. Okay. It's not going to make that much difference. Then since I'm down, I want to kind of crawl and regain my feet through the door. Okay. I do need a reaction speed check for that one, mate. Reaction speed. See? That, that'll do it. Barely. It wasn't that difficult. And so you're on your feet again, okay? All right. Excellent. And is uh, the other door opening? It will be if you want it. If you want it to be. Yeah. Yep. Okay. When you're ready, you, you finish yep, your turn. Yep. Daniel. This should be the fry time. That's uh, what is that? Six points. Uh, yeah, five points. Uh, yeah, six points if you let it off now. Yeah. What do you That's find? the PEP, the the robot there. The number two. Number two, yeah. Yeah. That's PEP, right? Yeah, PEP. So you can roll me the damage on that one, D10. Excellent. And uh, D10 damage. Oh, nice. Very yeah. Okay. Explode, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, um, magic blue smoke is escaping from the back of the robot's head. Cool. And the robot goes uh, limp. Uh, robot, uh, Scooter Robot 2, uh, you can see um, Cat does uh, absolutely nothing. Oh, really? Yep. Yeah. Uh, security robot, uh, sorry, bot one, uh, Jazz, uh, was lining up to take another swing at you, but it drops its arms to its side. Ew. Security robot three, sorry, not security robot, rot, bot three, was uh, against, uh, lining up to swing at you, Daniel. Uh, its arms fall by its side. 
Uh, bot 2 is smoking, literally. So, Cat, you're up. Hmm. Uh, well, if this... If it, it, has Security Bot 2, like, obviously stood down or just has done nothing? Like, what is Cat seeing? Are you, are you a robot expert? No, but I would know. Then it's it, uh, then it looks like it, it looks like it's doing nothing. And it looks like it's doing nothing. In other words, without being an expert in robotics, uh, you w wouldn't be able to t make the, di di the distinction. Yeah, it hasn't done anything for two uh, two turns. That's yeah. right, it hasn't done anything for two turns. No, that's right, it hasn't. Uh, w well, if it hasn't attacked me for a while, then. Uh, I would shout out to <laughs> Alex. Yeah, ten there. seconds. Yeah, that's that's an eternity. Uh, I, I would shout out to Alec. It's like, hey, what's going on with these bots? Uh, I don't understand. Uh, did you get control of them? And that would be all I could say. I have control of uh, one of them. <laughs> uh oh. Thanks, Alec. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Never helpful. This AI thing's not going to take off. Yeah, is that what you're doing? All right. Um, in that yeah, case, yeah, well, I, 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 yeah. That's right. I didn't see that clear. That's a must. Initiatives, please, guys. Way to go, Baboo. <laughs> Morning for Cat. Twelve for Cerise. Twelve for jazz. Oops, twelve for jazz. Uh, Fifteen for Daniel. Well done, Daniel. And four for Babu. Way to go, Babs. Daniel. All right. So it's what. Uh one point to keep it going and double his uh, dice if he succeeds. Yeah, if he's successful, yes. So although, I it, although it died, so um, you have to change targets. And well, as all I said, all I said is robot uh, bot two's um, uh, the blue smoke's coming out of the back of its head. The magic blue smoke. But we're going to let it fry on its own there, and I'm just going to back out and away from that one. Okay. Just in case we decide to do something, I won't hit my butt. Mm hmm. Cat? Cat has a much better way of getting information from a computer, and it's not talking to Alec. Uh, I assume this is going to take some time, uh, probably a couple of rounds, but she's going to sit at this terminal and see if she can get some information on the security system status. Okay, operate computer, please. No problem. Purple dice. Uh, operate computer. Mm-hmm. Even a level six penalty would be okay. Uh, yeah. That's my turn done. Yeah, it is a level six computer, by the way. Wait. Cerise. Um, Cerise is gonna um, say to to Cat, "Hey, Cat, I think uh, 
playing around with the computer parts probably initiated a security protocol. So we might want to put that back. And, uh, oh, we didn't do something. anything with it. Did we? Well, I, we took I it out, I right? No. No. No, no, no. Well, you got I shocked I just poked by it, it and got shocked. But I didn't take anything out. Yeah, that's probably all the discussion for this turn. Okay. Jazz? Jazz is going to go get his gun. Uh, what is his movement? His movement's pretty fast. He can run 38 meters per turn. Uh, so, I c assuming he can get to his bedroom and pick up his stuff. Except he's going to some doors. Oh yeah, the annoying doors. So that door's already open. He will open up that door. That door's already open too, because Baby was yep. already opening that. All right. So, so it's that the one. Door. No, actually, it's the one below you there, Hunt. Ah. That one. So many, so many doors. Yep. Okay. <laughs> good. Well, <laughs> if, uh, blame the architect for that. <laughs> and who's the architect? Not me. No, not you. Sorry. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, I should say not so easy. Finish your turn if you if you want to finish your turn off. Oh yeah, sorry, my bad. Babu. Okay, you got that door open for me too, so I can get to this door. Uh, no, well, hang on. No, 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 no. Oh, that door get that will door be open, open at the end of the round. Yeah, well, I'm gonna move right there. Get out of my way. I want my axe. So I'll get the button. Uh, the bot is deactivated and does nothing. The bot, security bot 2, uh, stands there and does nothing. Bot 1 stands there and does nothing. Bot 2 smokes and is listing to one side. Bot 3 stands there and does nothing. Next round, guys. What do you want to do? Uh, does Cat have any information yet? No. Seconds, dude. Seconds. <laughs> yeah, well, you, know you asked me <laughs> what I wanted to do, and I, I want to get okay. information. In that, case, so I'm, in that case, I'll get initiative rolls off you all, please. <laughs> yeah. Oh, see, instead of Babu getting Daniel's role, Daniel's getting Babu's role. <laughs> Babu four. Okay, in that case, let's go. Cat, you're up. You still operating computer? Has no, you've operated anything yet? You've operated yep. the computer successfully, so now yep. what are you after? What, 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 now that you're operating the computer, what, do you want, what are you doing? What are you... Yeah, are I'll you roll a display info for information on the security systems and right. Right, whether anything's been triggered or... Yeah, that right. kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Whether it was me poking the bear. Okay. Um, there's, there are no security alarms being triggered at all in the computer. Uh, there are no security protocols that you can see around... Um, around um, the 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 computer, there is, from what you can tell, without a detailed analysis, from what you can tell, there is no reason at all for the bots to act the way they have. Interesting. Well, I don't have time to do it this round, but I will relay that to Ceres so that he can figure out whether oh, they've been tampered with. Mm. Oh, okay. Yes? Well, I will relay that, Ceres. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing, nothing in the computers is all you need to do. Jazz, what are you doing? You're, you're, that door's open, Jazz. Uh, Jazz. Uh, door is open. He will go mm -hmm. to his bedroom door and... Try and open it. it. Daniel? He's going to keep an eye on the droids there. Okay. Cerise? 
Chronocom. Guys, we may have tripped a hidden security protocol. If the watch out for the droids, don't destroy them if you don't have to. Ours have deactivated. We are uh, we are investigating. Okay, that's an awful lot for a single round, but I'll let you get away with it. <laughs> Babu. Now I go open that door. Okay. And all the bots stand there and do exactly what they did last round, which was stand there or stand there and list to one side of smoking. Or are obviously deactivated because you physically deactivated them, as the case may be. Mm -hmm. Do you guys... What are you guys planning on doing? I mean... Cerise wants to check this security robot she's deactivated and see if, uh, by listing functions, etc., see if there's some hidden, hidden, uh, one, uh, hidden links to a different computer system, and two, mm -hmm. uh, any, what security protocols may have been tripped. Certainly. That's what you want to do. Okay, what do you want to do, Cat? Uh, you want to Cat, uh, she probably has all that she needs from the computer, I think. Because uh, there's nothing in here. It feels like there's, if there is, the robots are being controlled by something, they're being controlled by a separate computer system. So that's what she is feeling like. Uh, she'd probably want to take uh, Chronicom to Jazz and ask him to come down to the robot uh, bay with her uh, just to check out things down there. Okay. Daniel, what were you doing? I don't think there's too much I can do other than keep an eye on the robots in case they start moving again. Okay. And Jazz and Babu, I'm assuming you're gra grabbing your weapons? Is grabbing that what you the going weapons, to do? yep. Yeah. Alright. Well, um, a minute or two goes by without the robots attacking anybody. Um, so, you start to relax your guard somewhat. Jazz, were you going to go and join Cat downstairs in the robot repair on deck three? Uh, yeah, so if, we, if we're if we sort of a little bit more time, uh, I would want to wait until uh, Reese has investigated security bot one so we can all go down there. Okay. All right, we need to stick together, guys. No more than yeah. two groups. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Well, you better give me a list function role, please, mate. And it's a level four security bot. Yeah. Are the clicking on the dice sheets working or not? Should be. Yeah. Level 10. Double click it. I know that. Uh, it's that now okay. Now it's working. I don't know. It's alright. So we'll take the first one. Um, okay. Um, look. Um, something is very odd about Robot 1. Um, there are... Um, functions and that in missions in there um, to uh, attack the crew um, after the second jump from uh, of this of this flight okay um, there's also uh, a mini transmit you also managed to find evidence um, as part of that general attack the crew there's reference to a um, there's reference to a transmitter. Okay, what type of reference? As in, activate transmitter is one of the f is one of the, the activities of the attack. Okay, I'll pass that information on and tell the guys expect company. Yeah, no, it, it, yeah, okay, sorry, I didn't wasn't clear. The I indication is it's a short range. Um, like within the ship type transmitter, not a subspace. 
um, low power, short range. Probably go a couple of decks max, but that's about it. Hmm. Something else has been triggered. I don't know what. But something on this ship. Yeah, it does Alec know why the robot did? Was he able to shut down the robots? I was able to shut down the second security robot. And the and the the maintenance bots in the robot storage. How many other robots are unaccounted for? the three service robots on the on the first class deck plus the security robot you are working with okay so i'll pass that on to the guys that i don't know why the service bots shut down alec didn't shut them down hmm. but yeah stick together we need to investigate the ship um, what I want to do is deactivate all the robots, um, security bot two, specifically. Okay. Yep. Uh, well, you can move over to security bot two. Uh, it offers no offers no resistance to you at all. Um, you pop the cover and deactivate it quite quite easily. And then I'll go ahead and list functions on it too. Okay. There are. Functions uh, again. the The original mission uh, that you would expect the security robot to have is buried in there, but overlaid on top seems to be um, some sort of attack the crew type uh, type uh, mission uh, upon receipt of signal. Now, it's hard to tell, but it seems that that's been corrupted somehow. Like it didn't take, or that, that the original mission didn't allow it to happen, and there was some sort of conflict. The codes scrambled somewhat, and it's the type of thing that you'd, you, you've seen in the past when a robot um, has a malfunction of some sort because of conflicting, conflicting assignments, conflicting um, instructions. So it's a good conclusion that robot or security bot one was was uh, the one that was transmitting that signal to the others when to attack. Could have been. The question is, wh what transmitter are we talking about? Well, does security bot one have a built-in transmitter somewhere? I'll go ahead and search um, it. Yeah, and that get you better give me a uh, you better give me a uh, a repair roll for that one. Because that's the equivalent. Yeah, no, you 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 are not successful in locating anything like that. Um, don't forget, it's a it's a level four bot, so you got to take forty percent off. Yep. So no, you don't locate anything uh, like that. Um, so yeah, I don't think there's anything else I can get from these two robots. They've been manually shut down, and when the other guys get down here, we'll proceed together. Right. Well, a more in-depth, at some later stage, a more in-depth um, analysis of um, bot two, or bot one, or bot two, for that matter, uh, might be might be uh, worthwhile. You'd have to do that to, to, to be able to do it to do that with any sort of. Um, uh, if you put them in the shop, the shop will give you a bonus to your rolls. Is what I'm trying to say. Um, so if you want to have another shot at another go at that type of stuff later, then you'd have to move to the sh you'd have to get down to the robot repair bay, which is what it's for. It's like a med bay for a human, you know, right. for biological. So you get a bonus to your thing. So yeah. So um, do you guys? Do you guys on the upper deck? Do you guys want to? Um, you're going to meet up with the the guys on the middle deck. At some yeah, point, we should that stick together. Your tokens. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We bring can our do weapons. That. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so you're all on the you're all in the computer room with two deactivated bots. Um, I'm assuming the two on the on the bridge deck are going to fill the three in the other three in what happened and vice versa. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. 
Well, from 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 the description, you think that service bot two is effectively fried. You may be able to repair it, but may not. The other two just are just just standing there, not even deactivated. They're just standing there. Is the report you've got from the from everybody? Right. Hopefully, they were tied to security bot one, but we'll see. So, what do you want to do, gentlemen? I believe you are heading downstairs. Yep. Taking the robot with us. Are you taking the robot with you? You will need to. You'll need. To, you, there's no way you'll carry it by yourself. You'll either have to reactivate it or fetch a dolly. Or is there a? Can you? Might they have like a, a tethered remote control? No. No, 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 no. Uh, let's but you do, you do recall, you do recall seeing a dolly in the robot repair store in the robot storage area. Yeah, uh, when you check it out quickly. Uh, um, there are a couple of um, extra maintenance robots in robot storage. They appear to be um, deactivated, not manually deactivated, but computer deactivated. Um, Alex can confirm that for you. Yes, they are. Yes, I have deactivated them on your orders. Uh, are there any other? How many security robots were you equipped with, Alex? Alex, two, two okay. for this trip. Standard complement is five. So let's um, we'll bring the dolly down here. I'll investigate them in detail. Okay. I'll you bring all the robots down here? Yeah. Okay. And then uh, have everybody else search for the transmitter, unless they have something else they need to do. Uh, no, I, I hate to be uh, a stickler for details, but how are we going to get the dolly down the the, the ladder? Uh, it's, it like... uh, it's designed to be used in the uh, okay. through the hatches, so don't worry okay. about it. It's all good. It's one of those. It's one of those ones that latches onto the ladder and climbs it, and it motorized climbs itself. Okay. The other ones. I mm. do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, um, it's a slow process, but it, it can be done. Yeah. So you spend a couple of hours dragging the five robots down into robot storage. Um, it takes a little bit of effort to to manhandle them onto the dolly, but once they're onto the dolly, it's pretty easy to uh, to control the dolly. The dolly's power, motorised, powered, um, to, to get them where they need to go um, and down into robot storage. Um, so, um, what do you guys, uh, so are you just gen gonna search in general, or, or uh, what, what, what's the general plan? Gaz, in particular, would probably wanna uh, search the cargo hold on the mid deck because uh, yep. he feels like that's probably the the most likely place that a transmitter was stowed uh, okay. to, to look inconspicuous uh, so that's where he would be searching uh, but in the yeah uh, okay. in the uh, sort of spirit of keeping together uh, he would probably <laughs> wait until Cerise is done or at most split into a party of two like two parties so two parties of one party of two and one party of three. Three, yeah, yeah. Probably uh, leave oh one well. person with me, maybe Daniel, and the other three of you go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Daniel's in robot storage with Cerise and Cat, Jazz, and Babu are all searching, searching the cargo, the cargo holds. Is that right? Together. Yep. Yeah, yep. together. Yeah. Okay. All right. Search well, rolls. you three. You, th give, you three guys give me two search rolls, one for each, one for each bay. Oh, I clicked over too quickly there. Uh. <laughs> Don't click over too quickly. Hey, you said how many search rolls? One for each two, bay. Two, one for each bay. Yes, please. Per person. Oh, that's doing the searching. Uh, so oh, um, Jazz doesn't have a search. It's the average of logic and intuition. Yes, that's right. 
55. So while they're searching, and it's going to take a couple of hours to do that searching, okay? So during that time, what Cerise and Daniel, uh, well, Cerise in particular, are doing what with the robots? You said you were doing some stuff? Yeah, so I want to do a more in-depth analysis of um, bot, security bot one and comparing right. it to security bot two, how, how this uh, command system was set up. All right. So um, Daniel's just an extra set of hands and a little bit of security as needed. Yep, no, that's fine. That's fine. All right, well, uh, what are you starting with, the software or the hardware? Hardware. All right, well, that's a robotic repair role. Um, so um, only minus 20 because the, the, the robot storage gives you the plus 20 bonus uh, and it's a level f they're level four bots. So, um, whoa, yeah, okay. Do you want two? Uh, yeah, one for each, please. Okay, w you can tell You can tell the following. Um, with the art of the, the diagnostic equipment in the robot storage area, um, you managed to locate a small, um, the equivalent of a Bluetooth transmitter, it's the equivalent thereof, um, buried internal to um, robot, uh, security bot one. Um, it's not part of the regular, it's not part of the standard bot it's something that's been added in um, added in post post manufacture um, it's a pretty slip slide slip it's, it's not it was done quickly it looks like it was done quickly um, the the patch job um, and um, it's also you've never seen the type of manufacture of it before terms of non-frontier technology or just something new or old? No, in terms of non-frontier technology. It doesn't look like anything you've ever come across in uh, before. Ex yeah, give me another, give me another, um, give me another um, uh, uh, re robotic repair role. Yeah, okay. Um, it's got some details on it that sort of kind of maybe reminds you of um, some of the uh, the, the uh, Sapphire laser pistols that uh, that the that you threw overboard uh, a few days ago just some styling elements maybe okay. or something yep. like that just something you know it's, it's more of an impression than it than anything else especially if you haven't got anything to compare with um, directly, it's, it's all going from memory. That's the first thing, okay? Um, checking out robot, security robot 2, um, you don't find any receiver or anything else like that, but, um, yeah, so there's no there's no receiver in robot 2. Um, no extra receiver. I mean, it's got its standard receiver that, that it uses to communicate with the computer. Okay. Okay. So that's from the hardware point of view of those two. So yeah, I want to pass that info on and I want to actually take the transmitter and the related wiring, etc. Yep. Um, okay. And I also want to check with Alec if he sees any uh, ships in our vicinity that may have changed their course. Uh, no. Since we entered. No, make he, sure that he, he reports on an intercept. No, th there's nothing on an intercept. Uh, not well. Um, there's nothing on it. I mean, you guys are due to you, you guys are due to orbit uh, Pengrala, Peng, uh, Pengral, sorry, um, in a few days' time. So um, there's ships on intercept courses for the planet. Right. But that's just looks like normal normal traffic. There's nothing directly coming towards you guys, or nothing due to meet with you guys. You know, short of the planet, um, by any length of a, a, any length of, uh, of of time, or anything else like that. So no, there's no ships, as to the best of Alex's 
Alex is my leech. Um, you guys in the in the search, you guys in the in the cargo bays, just about finished searching searching the second bay, having found nothing in the first, when um, Cerise comes over with a comm unit and says he's found the transmitter. We well, thinks he's found the transmitter. What do you guys want to do? Uh, see. So there you go. Quick clarification: the transmitter I found is a low power transmitter. Yeah, yeah. It's probably it, it's probably enough running off the internal power of the of the bot, which is how it was powered. It's probably enough to reach throughout the ship, but certainly not beyond the certainly not beyond the ship by any but to any any practical means. Yeah. You know? Um. Maybe maybe outside if someone was spacewalking outside on the surface of the on the outer skin, maybe you get that far. But um, the outer sh the outer shield of the ships are normally radiation shielded, and the radio from this the the the, the signal from this transmitter probably wouldn't penetrate that far. Um, certainly not certainly not enough to make a difference. You know, um, I mean the ships ship the ships radio pierces the 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 ship's skin by being outside the skin on an air, on an aerial you know what i mean right yep um, so yeah um but it's certainly it's probably powerful enough to, to to reach from the bottom deck to the top deck and vice versa mm. yeah so i'll let the guys in the storage bay react i think i'd actually like to finish searching here see if there's anything else we haven't noticed before certainly um you just you're practically done as it is anyway um you don't find anything else of interest um in either of the cargo bays they're both reasonably empty it took a long time because you were searching every nook and cranny because you didn't know how big this this transmitter was um for, for record for record it's about the size of a um uh, of a bullet clip or a or a, a, a power a, a, a power clip, yeah, about the, um, five centimeters by two centimeters by a couple centimeters. Yeah, it's not very big. Mm -hmm. It's about the size of a cigarette packet, give or take. Mm. So now there's nothing else in the cargo bays of interest that you've been able to locate. Was there anything in particular you're looking for? No, stuff like a little transmitter or. It's yeah, something no. that does not look. That looks alien. <laughs> steam bath perfume. Y no, no steam bath uh, perfume. Yeah, if there was some of that, that would be great. But there is. It's up in your room, remember? <laughs> I think the thing that we were looking for in particular was any kind of computer that could have sent the signal off ship uh, and updated. A secondary computer. Else. Yeah. No, there's no. Yeah. No, no, there's nothing. There's nothing like that in the store. There's nothing like that in the cargo base. No, and you're right. Except, probably except for ours. <laughs> except for Alex itself. Yeah. No, Alex except himself. for our computers, because we have two. Oh, except for your stuff. No, no, your yeah. stuff. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> from your stuff. No. Plot twist. Nothing. It was that computer. <laughs> <laughs> the Sathar may have put a subspace radio somewhere that they got to, right? Engineering or so on. Yeah. Look, it's possible, but I mean, a subspace radio is. Yeah, you know, I mean they're not. Uh, you you I mean their subspace radios are a little bit big to to wear in a wear as a backpack radio. You know, they're a desktop sized piece of equipment. You know, they're a good two foot by two foot by two foot and heavy as all buggery. And then there's the battery to run them. They have the power battery to run them. They're not they're not a um they're not a small item. You know what I mean? They're luggable at the, at best they're luggable. Did we um. <laughs> After the Sathar, did we search engineering and such for damage? Could have they planted one somewhere in engineering or one of the other locations they got to? Yeah, you did a search of the ship for anything unusual. Something the size of a subspace radio or damage would have shown up, uh, you know, significant damage would have shown up. You were pretty sure they weren't around long enough to do any subtle damage to, the, to anywhere. They were moving pretty quick, remember? Um... Yeah. 
having said that, yeah, they 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 were there were some down here on this lower deck for a long enough time that you didn't know where they were either. Yeah. So, so the next part for me to do um, is to do the computer programming on the two bots. Um, yep. And in, with what we know, I would like to verify the hypothesis that the Sathar are the ones that reprogrammed them. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, programming's programming. I mean, yes, there are different styles of coding, um, but that's an individual thing, not necessarily a species a species thing. Um, but yeah, well, everybody that codes in Pangal. Things were changed. Sorry, say again. Oh, that type of thing, yeah. Um, yeah, you can do that. Uh, if you want to, uh, that's a, a, give me a, um, a, a an alter, an alter, uh, a function roles is equivalent to that type of level of, of, um, of, of information you're after. So, what's well, the chance that there's another Sathar still on board that's hiding from us and from the AI? Well, because you know, there's cameras everywhere, sensors yeah. everywhere. Um, yeah, because well, Alex is it so aware. <laughs> is, it, is it possible? Yes, it's possible. Everything is possible, I suppose. Is it probable? Well, I don't know. You could always go and get Alex to run a... Uh, or you go and run a, um, uh, a search of the information in, this, in the system over the last X number of days to see. Um, so those two alter function roles for, were for each bot? Yes, I assume that's what you wanted. Yes, it was. Um, look, it appears that the, it appears that the, um, the, 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 the alterations, if that's what they were, uh, were made at around about the same time. Um, and if you had to guess, around about three four days ago um, and the reason you say that, that is um, there's a boot there's a, a boot timestamp in the logs uh, uh, for when the bots were bought on board which was when you guys were bought on board the day you guys were bought on board so um, it looks like it was a complete system reset done and that day or the day before that day um, and then uh, whatever these alterations were done were done sometime, you know, after that, as I said, about three, four, five days ago, depending on, you know, it's hard to tell, but that's about the time frame you're looking at, which is around about when the South Hill were on board, yeah. Could have been, could have been. Um, so the other thing, the other thing is, um, uh, there is uh, um, a secondary set of functions um, that once in the in the first bot, the first security bot, um, and in the second security bot, funnily enough, it's in both. Um, that when the sh when the crew is disabled to stop the ship. Or stop decelerating the ship, better way of saying it. Which would result in the ship missing Pangal or crashing into it? Question? No, it wouldn't crash into it. No, it'd miss it. It'd fly through the system um, at, at speed. Um, but also, uh, in effect, silent... R in, in effect because it wouldn't be um, accelerating, the, the, its um, signal signature wouldn't be as high. Um, and then eventually, if it wasn't intercepted, it'd drift right through the system uh, in, and then out the other side into, and eventually into, into, into interstellar space. Um. Yeah, I don't know if anybody else uh, disagrees, but I think that was probably the Sapphire plan to uh their track. Yeah. So, unless uh, anybody disagrees, I'll try and uh, re remove the altered. 
programming from all the bots and repair them so that they are back to you know, how they how we think they were when we initiated this trip. Yeah. Well, you haven't checked out the, the three service droids yet. Yeah, that's true. So I'll, I can do those as well. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll do both hardware and software on them. I'll go ahead and make the rolls. Okay. Yeah, okay, none of the three bots have um, any transmitter in them, um, like the first security bot did. All of them have uh, similar programming to uh, the second security bot, um, and it looks like all three of them uh, were successful in that, in that secondary set of functions, or, or overlay set of missions and functions. Um, uh, service bot two's in a pretty bad way. He's had his brain fried by intense heat, and his body's been uh, body's been bashed around a bit. Um, so, uh, but the other two are effect effectively undamaged. Do we know why the service bot stopped attacking, or security bot two, for that matter? Well, security bot two looks like the uh, the altered mission. Um, failed or there was a conflict between the primary mission and the altered mission which caused it to go into some sort of uh, in effect it's, it seems to have rejected the secondary mission the sapphire mission if you want to call it that um, the first three well the second the second um, service bots probably because it had, it had its brain fried um, and the magic blue smoke escaped uh, the other th the first and third one um, hard to say, but it may be because it lost. They lost signal. Lost um, signal with what? With the triggering signal. But they did not have sapphire receivers, right? No, no, they didn't. But when you shut down this first security bot, you would have cut power to the transmitter in that security bot. Yeah, so we still got to find that transmitter on board. I don't know where it is, folks. We're going to have to search the you whole ship. Uh, but I think I also should try and repair and, and alter the programming of all the bots. Well, yeah. The security bot, it's the. Okay. The transmitter you found in Security Bot 1 is probably the transmitter you're looking for. Yeah. So it was transmitting to the other robots, but they didn't have those transmitters? Do they have receivers? Well, the bots have tra the bots do have receivers. They, they come standard to talk to the computer. Okay, so do they have... Um so the the altered missions included receiving a signal from somewhere. One? Yes, but okay. well, from somewhere, uh, a, a signal from somewhere. Yes. Oh, okay, okay. So I was overthinking it. So yeah, unless somebody's <laughs> opposed, I'm good for trying to restore everything to how we think it was. Yeah. That sounds fine. Yeah, I think that's what you mm. should do. Right. Well, if you if you can give me an alter if you give me an alter mission role for the for the bots, that'll effectively clear the secondary the secondary stuff out of it. Um, uh oh. Or not, as the case may be. Um, I think that I think that was security bot two, and and by the way, and uh, that effectively has wiped everything. <laughs> That's that okay. one on the other we'll hand. Leave it that way. And I'll even wipe it again if I can. Yeah. 
Um, so, yeah, these all two missions runs will be fine. Um, Service Bot 2 is going to need two repair rolls, one for the, for the physical damage and one for the fried brain. And the the security bots are the service bots are only level two bots, so they're a little bit easier. Just. <laughs> yeah, because of the robotics bay. Yeah, it's because of the robotics bay exactly. Um, did you want to check out the computer logs, Cat? Uh, yeah, that would be a good idea. Uh, what would we be? That would be a uh, an information. A display info role on the level six computer. Hmm. Yeah, no, look, uh, that one, no. Um, <coughs> you, 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 you get some information about the tracking of the tracking of, uh, of South R and that when they're on the ship and you guys are on the ship and things like that. But if there was a South R hiding aboard, um, you Wouldn't haven't know, spotted yeah. him. You haven't yeah. spotted him if he's there. Can you give me a second? Can you give me a second display info roll, please? Uh huh. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> it's even worse. Yep. Yeah. Nah, that's all right. That's okay. So, uh, now that you've done all the repairs and all the info gathering you can and all the rest of it, what do you guys want to do? Yeah, I feel this trip from hell might end if we lock ourselves in our rooms. <laughs> <laughs> trip from hell? It's not a trip from hell. What are you talking about? Uh, is our plan to uh, put the security robots back in storage? As though nothing ever happened. Yeah, absolutely. Reactivate yep. them and uh, return everything to where we think it's supposed to be. Well, you can't reactivating uh, our security bot two is not going to do much good because you wiped the mission and that out of it. Remember? I know, but we'll leave it the way we found it. What do you mean the okay. mission's gone? Don't look at us. <laughs> oh, what cat, mission? What mission did they have? Cat, you're going to have to uh, uh, erase all the logs of this attack. Uh, yo. I mean, if we're trying to cover things up, we've got to cover up all the other ones. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah we, we can try. It's probably not all that bad if it isn't covered up because people have to go looking for it. Uh, but yes, uh, do you want to operate for that, Matt? No, I want to repair for that one, mate. A repair. All right. Be the equivalent. All good. Be the equivalent roll. Prayer to the dice gods. Oh. Yeah, no. Jeez. Fair enough. Yes, Cat was successful in wiping the entire computer. <laughs> <laughs> All gone. All gone. Anything else you guys want to do? Yeah, carry around my weapons. <laughs> yep. Uh, that that
that's probably just just before. Uh, what are we gonna do when we dock? By the way, because it would be a bit weird if we're all armed to the teeth and stroll off all armed. Are we planning to put our weapons back uh, before we uh, dock? Because if there's one thing that will arouse suspicion is that we're all we look like we've been fighting for a week. Well, uh, we've been fighting for. A well, but I don't. I think we just put our weapons in with our gear and we have our duffel bags ready. To carried the weapons on and then we put them in the locker before we departed so it seemed to me mm -hmm. that protocol oh, so that's how it worked it, yeah okay it's not like an airport security thing where they came through other means okay cool well it's a private it's in effect it's a private it's a private um it's a private charter so yeah effectively so alec was the one who was acting as our tsa Yes. Well, believe it or not, the rest of the um, the rest of the trip in um, passes without incident. Um, everything runs smoothly. Um, servers bot too every now and then. There's a slight glitch, you know, um, in the way it walks. Just just a slight one, just every now and then. Um, but uh, apart from that, um, you uh, Alex is uh, challenged by the Port Authority, um, assigned uh, by Flight Control, I should say, Port Authority, uh, assigned a parking orbit, um, and uh, two shuttles uh, dispatched from one of the space stations uh, that you're parked outside. Um, <coughs> One of them would be uh, customs, UPF customs, and the other would be probably your liaison at this end. Um, you've got maybe half an hour before they arrive, the first of those shuttles arrive. Anything you want to do? Uh, do we know if they're coming to the upper or lower hatch? They're coming up and hatch. Yeah. And then just set up our gear there and wait for customs. Okay. Jazz is going to uh. order a gin and tonic from Service Box. Babu will sit next to him with his axe ready. <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, customs... The customs... Uh, shuttle docks uh, and a couple of customs officers come uh, come on board uh, they're both armed with pistols uh, they are uh, uh, star law UPF customs officers uh, well at least they're dressed in the proper uniforms and that uh, welcome to uh, Pangal uh, anything to declare nothing to declare Uh, according to uh, our records, uh, this is a private charter from uh, Terrain Star via Dixon Star. Uh, no stops along the way? Nope, nope. no stops. Excellent. And uh, I understand you're the caretaker crew, is that correct? Yes. Excellent. Well, if the... Uh, if the, the uh, Captain amongst you would like to uh, authorize uh, the uh, their release. Uh, we'll uh, let you get on your way. And he holds out a um, holds out a uh, a, a PDA, uh, waiting for your thumbprint. Ceres will look at Jazz and Babu, and if nobody steps forward, she'll she'll claw print it. Claw print it. Excellent. Thank you very much. And. Uh, Enjoy your uh, enjoy your stay. Um, that was rather. Uh, and then they, then they depart in their shuttle, uh, and the next shuttle docks. Um, that was rather short, sharp, and perfunctory. Um, you probably would have expected more detailed going over by customs. Um, certainly would have got that slightly more uh, more going over if you'd been on a private li uh, been on a public liner 
coming into Pangar. Interesting. Yeah, well, Seems like sure a perfect ship to smuggle blue plague on. <laughs> Sorry, what was that? It seems like the perfect ship to uh, smuggle blue plague between systems. On. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't sure know anything about not that. On the take of uh, Spiel Corporation. Well, I don't know That's what you're I talking about. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> well, there's no blue I plague, no so idea. it's just I conjecture. No yes. Um, the uh, the there's a, a, a human male uh, 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 comes out of the shuttle. Um, he's wearing a, uh, a, a a standard business suit, um, subtly embroidered onto the right uh, left breast pocket. Um, is the trans uh, the uh, terrain transport logo? Welcome to uh, Pangal. Uh, anything ca anything anything interesting on the on the way over? Did the uh, computer operate properly? The robots operate properly? Oh, by the way, my name is uh, Johnson. Uh, I have your uh, your final uh, payment here too, by the way. He says with a smash, uh, flashing a smile. Um, he's had dental work done. Nobody has teeth that white or that straight naturally. <laughs> and Babu Alex thinking quite he <laughs> might get more dental work done too. <laughs> Alec is quite the entertainer. Who, Alec? Yes, Alec. Yeah. You've gone very soft, mate. Oh, well, my mic probably got moved. Uh, there we go, it's better. Yes, he's, uh, he's quite charming, isn't he? Hello, Alec. Hello, Mr. Johnson. Obviously, yeah, I know. Anything to report? No. It was a pleasure uh, ferrying you uh, from uh, Train Star. We hope you travel on trains on trains transport again. Oh, I'm sure that's Alec, likely. Cheery way. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I see you're ready to go. Um, any last thing you need to collect? Says Johnson. I don't think so. Anybody? Excellent. Just our pay. Just your pay. Well, here you are. He says, handing over a um, handing over a cred stick. Um, a certified cred stick, I might add. Um, if you join me on the shuttle, we'll uh, take you to the back to the station. Sure. Sounds How like much is on that cred stick, anyways? I can't remember what I agreed to pay you. Uh, it was a it was a thousand each, wasn't it? I thought it was forty thousand. No, it wasn't forty thousand. A hundred thousand? <laughs> no. I From think it, it was, was a thousand. thousand. It, it was a it was a thousand each, and they paid you half up front. That sounds right. So, yeah. Um, as you uh, as you go to board the shuttle, uh, um, uh, three three technicians come off come off the shuttle, um, a Yazirian uh, and two Dralocytes, um, and they spread out uh, into the ship to uh, obviously. Um, take control of the ship. Uh, you guys board the shuttle with Johnson. Um, it's a short, um, including docking, undocking and docking at the space station. It's a half hour ride in the shuttle. Um, and when you reach the station, Johnson um, wishes you uh, wishes you f um, farewell. And perhaps we'll um, perhaps we can work together again sometime. Do let us know. Yeah. yeah. So you're on a you're on a bustling uh, one of the uh, major um, civilian uh, transfer stations orbiting Pango. Um. Yeah. So. Uh, Why do I feel like we need a job to get us out of system as fast as possible? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, let's not take the first job that comes along. <laughs> <laughs> no, but definitely the second. <laughs> yeah, I can't make that a habit. Let's uh, find some place to stay, and uh, maybe uh, Babu can do a little bit of uh, research. And mm. uh, let's reach out to uh, 
GTF. Maybe some GTF local has something. Sure, sure. Um, so are you staying on the station or are you going down to the planet's surface? Uh, where's GTF located? Uh, well, GTF, I mean, Mason, Mason it's a this is a commercial transfer station. Um, so GTF would not have offices on the station. Uh, there's certainly hotels and that on the station. Um, but um, uh, Pranglar uh, itself... Um, well, well, let's get off the station. Agreed, everybody? Uh, yep. Yeah, we can so do heading that. down, you're heading down to... Uh, where are we? Heading down to Grand Griven. Grand Quiven, I should say. Um, which is the main planet of the Pranglar system. Because Morgan's world is the major UPF area. It's a closed planet as such. Um, so, uh, yes, you're on the main, down on the main planet after a couple of hours. Um, find yourself a hotel or lodgings, as the case may be, uh, and put a call in to um, GTF. Hello, GTF. How can I help you? Who's making the call? I guess that would be a Babu. He is our face. <laughs> oh, yeah. Put me on the spot. Hey, guys. <laughs> What's happening? We just made Planet Fall here, and we're looking for work. I see. And uh, you are? Yeah, I'm Babu Johnson, representing Therese, Jazz, Cat, and Daniel. Fresh uh, back from Volturnus. Ah, the heroes of Volturnus. Yes, you are on record. Interesting, uh, interesting oh. uh, business, that. <laughs> yeah, yes, it was very interesting. So, uh... There's nothing on the books at the moment. Um, of course, if you'd like to come in, uh, we can do a face-to-face -face, uh, at some stage. When would be convenient for, for you to do that? Uh, what are you guys thinking? Just a uh, few days here? We can yeah, get tomorrow. Yeah. Certainly, we, we can give do us that. a chance to freshen up. And are you looking for a one-on-one, -on -one or do you want the group or... Oh no! Come in, come in together. We'll uh, we'll uh, organise something. Um, we are a pretty good. You're team. obviously a yes. You are a good team, as I was about to say. So uh, this is uh, this is good. All right. What uh, equivalent of ten hundred hours, maybe? Yep, that sounds perfectly fine. Very well. All right. We will be there. Okay. So. Um, Look, you guys uh, can all have three experience points for that little jaunt from the trip from hell, I believe he calls it. All right. Left up. I do have it. Uh, you can spend those now. Uh, you can also go shopping if you wish. Um, the web page is up and running if you uh, if you guys uh, wanna I pretty good um, skin suits do we keep them damaged or can they get repaired well, that can be repaired is that a linear same same rate as a new one yeah pretty much That's the only thing I want to do. I pretty much bought everything I could afford at the moment. I mean, I've got some sh oh. some spare cash, but and then uh, oh, the other thing is to have Jazz heal us. Yeah, that'd help. Yeah, yeah, it would. Is it first aid for everybody, or does people need surgery? No, you start with first aid. You always start with first aid. Oh, yeah, yeah, as in, do we need surgery? 
Hey, yeah, yeah technically Babu does because he needs 12 points. I think I'm down more than that. Give me a second. I Nope, I'm only down 9. Alright. Two first aid rolls. That looks fine. Uh, did anybody else take damage? It was just you two? I think that's it. Uh, did you want... Did we want to spend some uh, fire court on the two points, James, or just leave the two points down? Nah, let's just keep the two point down. Yeah. Oh, look, you would have you would have healed that naturally over the last couple of days. Yeah. Okay. Uh, cool. Okay. Uh, Anybody yeah. got the cost of a skin suit handy? I don't have the web page up. Different computer. Hang on. Hold up. I do okay. actually have it handy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Equipment, 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 equipment. Personal defenses. Uh, so, no. Skin suit military, 300. And 500 for the civilian, I believe. Civilian, that's right. I'm good. All right, what was the sword everybody was using? Sorry? What was the sword that everybody was using? Sword? A uh, sonic sword. A sonic, sonic sword. sword. From what I remember on the four sacks, this isn't a big deal how you ever you want to do it, but it was described just as a stick without a blade until you turn it on. Was it? Yeah, but I'm uh, not worried about it. I mean, or I should okay, say, whichever way you want to go with it. Uh, where are we? Four sacks, 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 Yeah, all right. Okay, cool. I still don't so think you're carrying it around uh, with you normally. Yeah, it's about, as I said, yeah, I still can't think it, yeah. Mm. Uh, I write a note or do I under story entries? I think it was under story entries. And I can't get a copy, you bastards. Damn, it's gonna make it difficult. I've got one on my character, but at some point. No, I'm later. talking about something else. I'm talking about something else, sorry. Ah. That's okay. We can get it sorted. Um Uh, don't mind me, I'm talking to myself. Um, so, yeah, anyone want to do anything um, in particular? Yes. Just uh, yeah. trying to learn the lay of the land at this point. Unless somebody else wants to go to a different company than GTF to see. Yeah, we might as well yeah, do yeah. that. Let's see what other companies are out there that are I not related like to, to steal. Get a, uh, 
perfume steam bath before we turn in and before we go to this uh, meeting tomorrow. And that's just me personally. And yeah, and I just want to look that? up other mercenary companies that have offices here other than those that might be related to Streel. Uh, so, uh, Merc Inc. is out, is that what I'm hearing? I don't, rem I don't remember who's related to who. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Uh, corporation. GTF, Galactic Task Force. Yeah, Merc Co. Um, and uh, uh, supposedly... Uh, in tight with Streel and Merc Co are the com main competitors to the GTF. Um, yes, yeah, so Corporation. Yeah, Cassidy Corporation, CDC. Uh, they could be hiding there. Yeah. I Actu mean, you can certainly put the word out on the streets and keep an eye on things. Yeah, we can do that. Actually, gentlemen, I think we probably should put in a word with uh, Merc Core. Let's not make it obvious that we're avoiding Streel. And we'll just accept a better job from somebody else. <laughs> or even a worse job from somebody else. Sure, we make bad decisions. We're the budget crew. <laughs> yeah, we could do that, though. There it is. So we'll make Babu call around and start putting down... Hey, let's uh, see what you got. Now, looking at mm -hmm. Merco as far as subsidiaries go, Force Co for military personnel, Secure Co for security personnel, and Risk Co for high risk operations. Mm -hmm. We want to limit us to just security, maybe, or do we want to deal with any of this? Yeah. Well, sure, they got a high risk job for us. Yeah, I would say the high risk stuff's probably above our pay grade at this point, but yeah. Mm hmm. So, yeah, we'll check with Marco about the uh, Secure Co. and see if there's anything either parent company or the subsidiary could do. And put in a tentative with Force Co. just in case there's a military break we could do. Okay. Well, um, you put the word out. You spend a couple of days uh, doing this type of stuff. Um, you have an interesting meeting uh, the next uh, next day with um, with um, GTF again. Uh, nothing. They've got nothing. Uh, nothing. Um, uh, nothing immediately. But they they're very impressed with you. Uh, the company's impressed with you guys for what you did on on um, on um, Volturnus, so they'll certainly keep an eye out for you for things. Um, hang on a sec. Uh, whatever it is. Yep, that's what I thought. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, so well, I don't know what else I can tell you. Um, just give me... Where the hell have I done with... There it is. Too many role-playing games in my collection. Nobody wants to pay us a million creds for uh, providing security at their teenager's birthday party? No. Okay, uh, yeah, just ask it. Why would they want to do something like that? Because we're celebrities. <laughs> what more fun would it be to, you know, rather than have Bozo the Clown at your kid's birthday party, have the heroes of Volturnus at your birthday party. We'll even dress the part. <laughs> yes, that's what worries me. With live weapons. Yeah, that's what definitely worries me. <laughs> Okay, look, um, sorry, I just have to do that. Um, oh, I needed that too. 
so nothing much happens uh, on the uh, what the hell nothing much happens on the what the hell yeah don't mind me you're not important no I'm not important I attached my oh, there it is. Right. in my backpack here <laughs> In the back. So, um, a couple of days, you're on planet for maybe a week, uh, maybe not quite that long, a 10 day, you know, um, when um, doing what you're doing, training, spending experience points, you know, shopping, whatever. Uh, when um, a, uh, uh, a, a an email arrives in your um, local email box um, from um, a gentleman by the name of Maximilia Maxig Ma I can't pronounce it. I'll start again. Maximilia Miliagig, which is a name and a half, um, uh, inquiring if uh, you would be interested in um, a uh, a job uh, uh, and an out an outer system exploration job um, uh, and if so um, please reply um, to the email uh, and uh, Max will set up a meeting um, with you at some stage. It's the general gist of the email. Hmm. I would do... Why don't we turn Babu loose on... Or uh, actually probably Cat loose on doing some background before we respond. Sure. That's you actually probably more... Search, and I can do the financial... Uh, yep. Business background on him. All right. Certainly can. You can do that. So you guys want to hit those rolls? Oops. Oops. What was the oops for? Oh, I just roll it as jazz. It's not really a big oh. deal. Okay. All right. Um, doing a thorough computer search. Um, the only thing that's turned up um, of interest um, there's a, um, a Maximilia Malagig um, is apparently uh, the uh, ship's master of um, the VSS Last Legs uh, you turn that up in shipping records um, they're uh, um there you also um uh, there's a Maximilia Maligig who uh is supposedly um a ship's navigator and first officer or has been in the past um the gentleman is a brusk apparently um and um the system of birth is uh Prengla um but uh that's that's about it um financially um the uh the last legs wasn't pay wasn't very expensive and from what you can gather it's pretty much on its last legs um max you, you get the distinct impression that max may have sunk um, the last of his money because uh, nobody else would buy a ship like this um, it, it works it's, it's a going concern but it's certainly not a luxury starliner um, it's a size three um, explore uh, size three explorer um, so yeah what else did you want to know Has he ever worked for the Megacorps, and which one? 
Uh, yeah, look. Um, or been financed by him. Not been financed him. He, um, he's, a, he's an independent. He looks like an independent. He's taken. He's worked for captains who have been, who have worked for um, the uh, Capellan free, mar- free merchants. Um, he's worked for ships that have been working for um, various subsidiaries of just about all the megacorps um, over the over the years. Um, but he seems to be um, a freelance um, spacer, uh, not tied to any one particular uh, megacorp um, or or planetary government. Um, but um, but uh, uh, a general, med- yeah, a general spacer. Does that sound too good to be true? Are we that lucky? <laughs> <laughs> Is the GM that kind? Maybe no. That's the wrong way of saying that. Um, yeah, I don't know why we're saying that. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I suppose we can always hear him out and tear him down. Well, let's give it a day. Maybe another offer will come in. I'd like to have mm. comparisons, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, there is a, uh, later that afternoon, um, uh, 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 Merco um, comes up with a um, a general bodyguard security type job um, local to the system. Um, um, it seems a bit of a cakewalk. Um, in other words, they seem to be hiring you guys for your reputation as heroes of Volturnus more than than anything else. You're starting to get a few over the last week. You're starting to get a, a little bit more recognition. Um, the paparazzi haven't shown up yet, by the way, but um, but uh, certainly people know you're in town um, or know you're in town now. Um, other than that, um, you know, there's a couple of endorsement, a couple of endorsement deals come in from various advertisers, um, but it, nothing that piques your interest, and nothing out of system, which I believe is one of your criteria. But this uh, explorer is out of system. Sorry, who was I had a second echo then. Was that one of the guys talking or was that just somebody yeah, in the background? Yeah, the uh, Explorer mission. Oh, sorry. He wants us out of system. Well, if you're going exploring, it means exploring out of system, yeah. Well, yeah. hang on, sorry. That's not a given, is it? Because um, some, a lot yeah. of the, even, even a lot of the populated systems aren't fully explored. Now, this is an out of system exploration, apparently, according to the email. Right. Um, well, to contradict what I said earlier, if we're ever going to work for Mer- Merco, now might be the time before th- we're too much of an enemy, if we become an enemy of them. Um, if we want to ever say we've worked for them. It's not a strong reason to me, but... I don't want to... Well, okay, uh, again, don't forget the mega corps aren't the only corps. Um, closing yourself off to one of them, even one of the recruiting corps, probably not a big deal because GTF will pick up... What you would lose in Merc Corp, you pick up in GTF, but, I mean, this is uh, there are jobs coming in that aren't going through either of them. You know, there are smaller recruitment agents out there. There are smaller national corps or system level corps that aren't that aren't frontier wide. Um, and of course, there are subsidiaries of the mega corps themselves. Um, mm-hmm. So, um, if you wanted to particularly work for a mega corp, you could probably organise it. If you wanted to particularly never work for a mega corp, you could organise it, and it probably wouldn't hurt your chances of employment 
one way or the other, really. Uh, yeah, it swings and roundabouts. What you lose out in, yeah, in column A, you'll pick up in column B type thing. So it's up to you guys what you want to do. Yeah. I'm personally and by concerned the way, of what happens when they find out there's no uh, uh, cargo on the uh, ship we just came in on. Well, they already know that. Well, yeah. By now they would. By now they would, yeah. Yeah. So you get a job with Merco, it could just be payback. Yeah. Well, um, th don't forget, Merc Merco and Streel, if that's what you're worried about, they're only allies. They're not well, yeah. one is known the other. All right. They're not subsidiaries of each other. Somebody doing some playing with that stuff, though, probably has the connections he needs to... Well, Streel is the second biggest megacorp in the frontier. Pangal is the biggest, of course. Pangalactic Corporation is the biggest. Yeah, I mean, I guess th what I would do is let's let's hear out Maximilian. Um, at this point, for Merck, I would say no to that offer. Thank you very much. If you have something else, please let us know something mm -hmm. a bit more uh, interesting. And let's also reach out. I don't know if we c if Pan Gal has an office or if we have to go through GTF. Oh yeah. But I'd reach out to Pan, Pan Gal, Gal and and reach out to GTF again and ask GTF if anything news come up. Yeah. Well, GTF. Uh, no, nothing's new come up with GTF. Um, getting into any of the other megacorps is pretty difficult. I mean, they don't know you from a sack of shit. The fact, apart from the fact, of course, you are supposedly the supposedly the heroes of, of Volturnus. But I mean, that has. I mean, it's got some currency, but you know, that and five yeah, bucks they get get a cup heroes coffee. from all sorts of planets, don't they? <laughs> well, maybe not, but yeah. Um, I mean, imagine imagine you guys walking into. Oh, I'm trying to a large corporation. Um, Exxon. Walking into Chrysler, walking into Exxon or Chrysler, um, and saying, "Hey, you got a job?" I mean, what are they going to say? They're going to say, "Yeah, look, here's some forms. You know, what makes you think you want to work for us?" Yeah, there's a re th th there's a recruitment process, and you can go through that process if you want. I just wouldn't hold my breath. Is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. No, well, it's. I mean, us replying to that email doesn't mean that we're taking the job. We're just chatting to move it further, right? We should probably do that and hear the person out. Uh, it, yeah, I'm all it, for that. It, yeah, it feels like the next step. Sure, we can do that. So, uh, replying to the email, um, indicating yes, you'd like to discuss it further, is that correct? Uh, yeah, I yeah think as long so. as Babu's happy with that. Yep. All right. Well, Max sets up a, uh, a, a meeting at... Um, at uh, one of the local restaurants. Um, it's quite a nice restaurant. It's not completely over the top, but it's certainly one of the nicer ones um, for tomorrow evening, if that's acceptable to you, to, 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 to everybody. Sounds yeah, fine. absolutely. We'll keep right. looking for other stuff, but yeah. Yeah. Well, the rest of today and the rest of tomorrow goes without any further nibbles. Um, so... Um, uh, I'm assuming you're getting dressed reasonably, um, reasonably highbrow for this meet. Uh, sort of, yeah. Yeah, like I say, Babu tries to be human, so yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> uh, go on. Sorry. I was going to say, uh, us dressing up is uh, wearing our civilian skin suits instead of our military ones. <laughs> Yeah, possibly. Uh, I guess you're saying I should buy a civilian skin suit. That's I'm what saying, well, you should buy, are you should saying you should some buy some fancy clothes? If they're if they're Kevlar aligned, that's up to you. Can't I just polish my shell? Polish your <laughs> shell. <laughs> is that a euphemism or is it? A... I'm a brusque. <laughs> Don't I have a? Carapace? Yes, 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 yes. I was just being slightly Get terrible. Turtle wax. Turtle wax. I 
I have a question on uh, weapons, carrying around weapons, uh, and screens uh, and that sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, no, 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 no. Screens you probably get away with, as long as they weren't turned on. Because they're basically a little, you know, they're a, um, they're a, um, you know, a, 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 a thing you wear in your belt, basically. Um, weapons, yeah, not in, not in the middle of town, dude. Um, not unless you want to get some, uh, not unless they're concealed, or concealable, as the case may be. Um. If Rusk with his walking stick, it's not concealable. <laughs> it's a meter long black walking stick. Yeah, I think the authorities would recognise what it is. So, yeah. you know. I will buy yes. a civilian skiing suit, though. Yeah, it's fine. Does uh, Cat get away with her uh, needler pistol on the wrist uh, little sleeve thingy that she has? Oh, you you can certainly put a you can certainly have a concealed weapon in your a concealed weapon under a coat or something. Just don't wear it on your hip. You yeah, know, yeah. Don't have a don't carry a Magnum forty four. Carry a, a, a small holdout pistol. Yeah, she's you know? she's got her little uh, wrist slider thing that she can insta grab a uh, needle or pistol to her hand. I forget what sure. it's called, but it's the... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. Sorry guys, just getting a couple of things sorted. Um, so, you going to meet Max? Yep, yep, I think that's the plan. Right. Um, yeah, look, um, there we go. Um, you walk in uh, to the, uh, sorry, oh, pardon me, you walk into the restaurant, um, the me to D, uh, uh, um, uh, asks Maximilia party. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, that, sorry, that was my fault. I got that wrong. Um, Malagig party, Malagig party, uh, and leads you to a um, not a booth, but a secluded part of the restaurant near the back. Uh, there's um, a, a rusk um, seated at the table. As you um, as you arrive, the rusk comes to um, its or his feet, um, and uh, The equivalent of a rusk smile breaks across its face, um, and uh, thank you, thank you for coming. Please, please take a seat, and you know, waves his hand um, uh, towards the seats. Uh, can I get you something to drink? Is he the uh, handsome Devonois Devon uh, man of my or brusk of my dreams? No, he's a rather grizzled. Oh, he's he's all right, but I mean, he he, he comes across as a grizzled spacer. All right. Yeah, I'll have. Uh, I don't know. Beetle gin and milk. Tonic. I have no idea. You have drinks. Yes. Okay. So, uh, please, please have a seat. Um, uh, dinner is on me, uh, as I drinks. He says. Uh, and uh, while we're having dinner. Uh, we can discuss the uh, discuss what has brought us together," he says. Um, so I'm assuming you're ordering something. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, once uh, once um, uh, entrees arrive, uh, well before entrees arrive, Max uh, introduced himself as yes, my my name is Maximilian McGig. 
Um, it's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Let me guess, and he goes around the table. Uh, you must be um, uh, Johnny. Uh, sorry, you must be Daniel Scorch. I'm going to get Johnny Scorch for a second. I don't know where that came from. And you <laughs> must be Miss. Ka- you must be Miss Cat Haskell. And um, he pronounces Jazz's full name properly, uh, although he stumbles over part of it. Um, Babu and Ms. Cerise Zakar, a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Uh, trying to be charming. Um, <coughs> and succeeding somewhat, but, you know. Um, he doesn't come across... He does not come across as oil or anything else like that, but, he, but he, he's obviously comes across as more used to um, yelling at uh, ye- yelling at um, lower lower ranked spaces than than being charming to women in a in a restaurant. Um, he doesn't he doesn't do too bad. All right. Uh, Make small talk. Asks about uh, the Volturnus, uh, about yourselves, uh, and every answer seems to please him, uh, mm-hmm. as if he's made the right choice, uh, especially when. Um, you tell some of the um, less classified parts of your story. Um, he's uh, all ears. Uh, this goes on throughout Entree, and then once the mains arrive, uh, he turns the, the, the conversation to, to what he has invited you to dinner for. Did you want to say something before that, Cerise? Nope. 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 Okay. Well, he said, he says, uh, the reason I've I've asked you to join me is I have a I have a uh, a proposition for you. Um, let me let me fill you in on on something. Um, I was the second mate of a Rusk free merchant ship um, a few a few years ago. Um, well, a year and a half ago actually. Um, we made a uh, a jump once. Uh, and we misjumped. Ended up uh, over a, a planet or in a system we uh, we call Star. Uh, we call Sundown. Uh, Sundown had a had a uh, a planet, a habitable planet called um, Star Mist. We've called it. Um, I've got the full details here. He says, patting a, a briefcase. Um, we uh, we put down on the planet um, and uh, discovered a um, a, a race of bipedal uh, nomads and uh, primitives, which we labelled, uh, which we called Heliotes. Um, the uh, the planet Star Mist itself is in a uh, the the generally tolerable range of. Uh, a range of uh, of habitat, um, although uh, it's um, covered by large cra- uh, large rifts in the surface, some kilometres deep. Uh, the life on star mist tends to live in the in the rifts because the actual surface of the uh, of star mist is is bitterly bitterly cold, too cold to survive, I believe. Um, Anyway, it was uh, while, while I was wandering around the uh, the one and only Heliot village, I I came across something um, that led me to believe there's in effect a treasure buried or hidden on Star Mist. I, I'm not talking gold and silver. I'm I'm talking something else, uh, which I'll get to in a moment. Um, we uh, we left Star Mist. Um, and made it our way back to Frontier Space. Um, the captain um, reported the planet uh, to the UPF as per regulations. Uh, um, I uh, immediately resigned, um, put together uh, all my savings uh, with a little bit of help from some investors, uh, bought a ship, uh, and I intend to head back to to sundown and star mist and and recover um, recover the the, the the treasure in inverted commas yeah in air quotes um, 
however uh, I believe I'm going to need uh, to be successful uh, some individuals who are particularly good at exploring um, alien planets and that's where you come in my friends um, if you would uh, be interested in joining this little expedition of mine um, we can um, share in the riches that I'm sure we'll discover and of course it will do wonders for your own um, reputations um, as well uh, as uh, international or interstellar explorers um, does any of this interest you at all he says hopefully well it does sound interesting to me yeah and it, it also sounds very familiar too <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a better way of putting it than I could have. But yeah, certainly seems to uh, align with our experiences. So does that mean you'll be uh, interested in joining the expedition? Well, we need more. We need to know more about the expedition. How many people? Tell us a little bit about your ship. Uh, how we're going to, you know, split the well, treasure... Uh, uh, an, equ uh, an equal split of, uh, of uh, any uh, treasures, uh, any profits from the treasure after expenses are paid for, of course. Um, the crew, um, uh, I will pilot and navigate. Um, we, ha I have an we have an engineer uh, on, on board and yourselves. Um, my engineer uh, we'll stay with the ship while uh, we um, explore the planet to, uh, to, to or explore the area and you'll understand why in a moment uh, the area of the main Heliope village which is where I believe the, uh, the, 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 the treasure mainly to be um, here let me show you he says and he reaches into his bag and pulls out a piece of metal about the size of a spread palm um, it's manufactured, it um, appears to be reasonably high-tech uh, in, its, in its manufacture. I found that uh, near the Heliot village. Um, I had it analysed once I brought it back uh, to the frontier, uh, and the analysis says it's the product of nuclear fission. Now, as you can imagine, with a primitive society like the Heliopes, there's no way they could have produced this, which means there must be some sort of advanced civilization uh, on on the planet at one stage. Um, and it's this which I'm hoping to find. The uh, artifacts from this civilization and the uh, the knowledge that we could sell would be phenomenal in its um, in its value but only if we get there first uh, we have to move relatively quickly otherwise um, the UPF will send scientists there uh, before we can um, discover anything the only reason they haven't is because they don't know about this he says tapping the metal as he passes it around um, so I purchased um, the VSS last legs and refitted the old ship, and uh, we'll um, we'll go uh, treasure hunting. He says. What, uh, what does that help satisfy your curiosity? Curiosity? Cu uh, sorry, it's me. I'm getting, I'm getting tongue tied. Your curiosity. Cu oh, I can say it now. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes you just get one of those words you just can't get out. That's the word. Word for the day is curiosity. Word for the day is curiosity. Um, I'm 
interested. I still think there's details. Um, one of the things and exploring a planet requires more than just a spaceship. What other equipment do you have available? Uh, we have an, I have an explorer uh, ready to go uh, on board ship, um, and obviously enough enough uh, enough power to run that explorer um, uh, via the ship's generator. Um, the ship is small enough to actually land on the planet, um, so um, it should be it should not be an issue in that regard. Of course, uh, whatever equipment you wish to bring yourself, uh, and as I said, uh, we'll keep track of any expenses uh, and take those out of the uh, out before we uh, we divvy up the the the, the profit. He looks at you expectantly. Mm. And I look around the table at the other folks. Do we need a few hours to think about this, gentlemen? Cat? Um. Well, we would need some time for final preparations, of course. Yeah, uh, we need to probably sit down and talk about it ourselves and make sure we have everything covered on our end. Of course, of course. Um, as I said, time is of the essence. Um, if you decide you do not wish to participate, um, then if you could let me know as soon as possible so that I can find s some other uh, some other intrepid explorers. But I do hope you will enjoy you will uh, you will join me. Um, some individuals such as yourselves are reasonably rare in this day and age, especially one so uh, so reasonably well known. You can, and you can thank Volturnus for that, by the way. <coughs> uh, do you have other equipment uh, like uh, survival gear? Cold weather gear, tents. Are, are you providing? Are, are you fitted out for that, or do we have to bring well, it along? Well, the the exp well the explorer comes with that, um, mm -hmm. and this is something you would know. This is something you know. The explorer, yeah, okay. the explorer comes with that type of thing usually, um, yep. and of course we won't be that. But it'll only, it will only be a short, a short distance from the ship. The ship itself will be. Um, but I mean the planet. Um, I, I don't expect we'll be going on the on outside the rift, and the rift itself is is pretty temperate. Um, I actually slept in one of the helio huts um, for several nights and ate ate their food with them. Um, it was quite a pleasant, if primitive, existence um, in that regard. Well, I'll say that our experience tells us that uh, the unexpected and the unplanned for will happen. So oh, of course. We better plan for whatever of we course, possibly no, can. As many but contingencies yeah. as we can. Yeah. Uh, no, but I mean, we, we certainly do have some. Uh, we can have. Uh, there are. We can get some. I mean, pick, picking up tents and sleeping bags and a few things like that. That's that's a half day's tra uh, shopping. Go to the local um, BCF, uh, bamping, ca bamping, uh, boating, camping, and fishing store. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, so, uh, you know, um, there's no jet copter or anything else like that unless you want to bring one, but, I mean, why would you need one? Um, mm. um, you know, um, but, no, Max, Max, Max is, Max will, Max is uh, yeah, the expedition has got, um, you know, some tents and some sleeping bags and, and you know, some survival kit and, and general stuff like that, but, you know, you bring your own weapons, you bring your own specialist equipment, you bring your own computers if you want them, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the more you supply, of course, the more um, more profit there is. Yep, yep. Um, do you, are there other questions, gentlemen? Or uh, shall we finish our lovely dinner and let 
uh, Max know first thing in the morning our answer. I think that'd be a good plan. Excellent. I can uh, certainly. Well, it has been a it has been a pleasure. By this stage, dinner is yeah. You know, you've gone through dinner. You've gone through you know dessert and all the rest of it. Um, in that case, I'll uh, I'll take my leave. Um, you can contact me via the e uh, the email. Um, if you could let me know tomorrow, one way or the other, please, that would be uh, that would be very nice. In the meantime, um, and enjoy the rest of your evening. He says, as he gets up to uh, to, to leave. Good night. Good night. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, good night. So you guys are still sitting at the table. Um, you know, uh, there's a. Um, do you want to talk about things, or what's the story? I say we go back to our lodging to discuss. Okay. Yep. So is there any mm -hmm. you want to go back to your lodgings now then? Yep. It would probably be good. Yeah. Okay. So heading back to your lodgings. Yes. Mm -hmm. Why do? Yeah. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Okay. So back at your lodgings, you all gather in one person's room, or the uh, yeah, and yeah, uh, and well decide to discuss room. things. Um, it I think it definitely sounds exactly like what we're interested in. Um, you know, Get his whole system for a while. Yeah, exactly, and. Um, if it's successful, great. Uh, you know, the potential is for a discovery is unlimited, right? But um, yeah, technically, we're not out much if the treasure is not exploitable. Mm. Well, if what Max said is, uh, this is between yeah, if what Max said is true, then then yes, that piece of metal he he found there's no uh, uh, there's no way primitives could have done it could have used it uh, and it didn't lo uh, it didn't look like anything from the frontier races so uh, th an ancient civilization or an alien civilization or whatever um, certainly is on the cards in that regard uh, by chance did that metal have any of the uh, artistic Markings design of the transmitter no 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 it's just a, it was just a hunk of metal um, probably plating, maybe. Um, hard to tell. Uh, you didn't have that good a look at it. I mean, yeah, you in a restaurant type thing. Um, but I mean, it was as I said, it was it was if it was if it was a product of nuclear fusion. I mean, God, uh, nuclear fusion. You know, it's got to be at least post twenty first century Earth. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We no, can't I, do that I'm yet. just saying that just because it's from off planet it could be a scrap of a crap crashed ship right yeah. that's not exploitable we just don't know just, just but I don't think we lose much of anything yeah. other than some time just, just give me a sec guys um, so yeah I think we're good doing it um, yeah I think so <sighs> sorry about that the only okay. open question I have, uh, mm -hmm. gear-wise, is um, the Explorer. I know you can uh, mount arms and put armor plating on Explorers. I have no idea if that Explorer is either, or if we would need such. Well, it isn't. Um, but whether you need it or not, I mean, if we're talking primitive, if we're talking primitive um, civilization, um, stone axes, bows and arrows, an explorer would stand up to that. I mean, explore, an explorer is um, part way between a tank and an, and an RV. Um, yeah, they're 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 designed for rugged. They're rugged. They're a rugged off-road vehicle. Each wheel is independently powered. Um. So yeah, they're 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 pretty, they're they're pretty hardy machine. Um, and cold weather survival gear. Yeah. Um. 
you know, you, 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 you can certainly mount, mount weapons on them if you wanted to, but I mean, um, there's nothing, there, there's nothing there at that moment. I mean, if you, there's, there's nothing. The Explorer is, a, apparently from Mac, from what Max was saying, it's a stock standard Explorer. And that should be good enough for just about anything except, except mounted combat. Are you going to get into mounted combat? Uh, sorry, I rephrase that. Do you plan to go into mounted combat? It's not about what we plan. It's about what happens. I mean, yeah, I and you say, yeah, it's primitive civilization, but, you know, on Volturnus, we ran into the Star Devil and the Sathar. So, um, to be overprepared True. is... Yeah, yeah. So, I... My only thing, I think, uh, I think we're probably good not putting armor plating on the Explorer, but I would like to put a heavy weapon on the on a mount on the top. Oh, that's just okay. Well, in that case, grab a grab a heavy weapon. You can certainly do the work on the um. You can certainly do the work while the ship's in transit. Yep. Um, and that I would suspect would be whatever Jazz is best with, whatever he heavy weapon Jazz thinks should go up there. Yeah, that'd be the heavy laser. Yeah, the heavy laser, wouldn't it? Yeah. Do we already have that? Yeah. The heavy laser, they should have one. Yeah, no, we, yeah, and a recoilless rifle, right? So we should have. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know who has the recoilless rifle on their equipment list. Do you have that, Jazz? Uh, no, Cat has it. Oh, okay. And make, just make sure we have some rounds for it and, a, I guess, a tripod. Yeah, we we have like 98 rounds or something crazy. Oh, yeah. awesome. Yeah, we had a big box of them. And that big box is still uh, that big box is still at the starport, by the way. Yeah. With Just our computers and all that kind of With stuff. Your, exactly. Cuz those computers are really heavy. Like I, it, mm. it almost makes me want to sell them until we have a ship. Uh because they they kind of it's it's probably pushing the the bounds of uh reality that we could actually cart these around with us because uh, even the that's why they're in storage at the moment yeah even the computer three is 20 kilos but it has a hundred kilo battery so. yeah yeah if i mean i don't know if we have a use for them or you know how much how much they're worth and how much we're going to lose by selling them and having to buy one later oh, oh they're worth a lot like a hundred and thirty thousand dollars yeah. So work on half price. Well, I mean, it's no, yeah. there's no reason why you can't leave it in permanent storage. You just have to pay for yeah. permanent storage. Yeah, they're probably worth leaving for. in storage because once we have a ship, like having that computer there will be a good thing. Or a permanent base. A permanent base of operations, anyway. Yeah. Yeah, so I say we uh, mount the heavy laser on the Explorer, so any equipment we need, I can put it together while we're in transit. Mm -hmm. um, yep, uh, Jazz has got plenty of explosives. <laughs> Checking. Grenades. Uh, Grenades or, tw or D19? He has... Oh, okay, you know, he doesn't really... He doesn't have a lot of... Is there more than one? Uh, he seems to only have two units of TD-19. Well, doesn't well, I seem would like enough. Grand. Yeah, I would, I would buy a case of, case of ammo or two. Um, I only have amounts that are reasonable for me to carry for the most part. But I do have lots of grenades. Yeah, you like grenades, don't you? I do that's why i have a grenade launcher <sighs> yes uh do we c should we consider things like uh grappling guns and that kind of stuff does anybody have one of those because we are dealing with weird terrain oh that's a great idea and uh i don't know if the explorer comes but uh mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I have an all-weather blanket, but that's not going to put up for sub-zero temperatures. No, but it's certainly all right in sub explorer. But I mean, you're not expecting to go into sub-zero temperatures. Yeah, but you keep saying that word. 
the, uh, the you're not intense. expecting you're not anyway, you're not expecting to go into the heart of the sun either. Does that mean you're going there? The the tents that the uh, thing would come with would come with an insulating gas, so we'd have yes, X would. amount of nights of. Okay, so safe. if the explorer comes with tents, then I'm good. Yeah, the explorer comes with, with sleeping equipment. Well, not sorry, tents, but sleeping sleeping uh, facilities. Well, inside the explorer, I'm talking about a, a survival and tent that. or something. Yeah, oh, the survival tent. Yeah, well, that's where it's, that's where it all where the blanket comes in, comes in. So, all yeah. right. Actually, I do have lots of extra spare clips, but I might buy more. <laughs> I might buy more. Well, so you gonna, are you, yeah, yeah. Are you gonna tell? Are you gonna tell Ma Max you're going or not? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, we got I'm it. good. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm yeah. in. Yeah. Okay, everyone in now though. Yep. Uh, yeah, cat. If we're going on a mission that could potentially be long, cat does need to buy a, a crate of ammo because with the automatic rifle, uh, the only way that she has a damage output is to go machine gun Charlie and burst oh at everything. Uh, so she goes through quite a lot of ammo. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. We I had to pull up that. No, we have to. I had to pull up the email for a reason. Um, you're about to get one. Oh no. Oh no, what? An email. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if you're good, I'm gonna update my inventory and pay for it. Yeah, by all means. Yeah, guys. Well, that's it for this session. We hope you've enjoyed the game as much as we did. We'd like to thank Smiteworks, Sirenscape, and Twitch, and of course, all the fantastic people involved with the Star Frontiers RPG over the years. I'm Dulux Oz. On behalf of the entire gaming group, we'd like to say thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time. Until then, may your God go with you. I think it's under personal defense stuff. Yeah, or miscellaneous, one of the two. Yeah. Okay. Um, so when you shoot an email, when you shoot the email to Max saying you're in, all right, he replies, excellent, excellent. Here's some information for you in a reply email, okay? I can't type for some reason. Ooh, I just realized how big that was. Anyone got a particularly small email box? No, it should no, be okay. I'm good. Because I just realised most th there's four files, most of them are in the in the hundred to two hundred k range, and one of them is two point six meg. <laughs> Ew. But it went. Um. So um. There you go. Um. Um. They are overhead photos that were taken um, that Max has sent you um, and ignore the numbers you'll understand why when you see what I'm talking about so you can have you can have rid of those at your leisure people all right and that's a good place to leave it for, on, on that on that note uh, once everyone's done their shopping, um, so would you like to run those final?
those um, final um well that's it for this session we hope you've enjoyed the game as much as we did we'd like to thank Smiteworks, Sirenscape and Twitch and of course all the fantastic people involved with the Star Frontiers RPG over the years I'm Dulux Oz and on behalf of the entire gaming group we'd like to say thanks for watching we'll see you all next time until then may your god go with you <laughs>